City Field in New York. The New York Mets play the Chicago Cubs. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by GMC. See the pros at your tri state GMC dealers. GMC, we are professional grade. By Geico, over 75 years of savings and service. By Cholula, uncapped real flavor of your favorite foods with the delicious taste of Cholula hot sauce. Try all five unique flavors, including green pepper. By Empire City Casino, Manhattan's closest casino, game on. And by Sleepy's, shop Sleepy's three-day doorbuster weekend with special holiday deals every day. Sleepy's, the only mattress professionals. Well, the Mets last October swept the National League Championship Series from the Cubs, and they're looking for another similar sweep today. Can the Mets sweep the Cubs? We'll find out in a few hours. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to City Field. It's afternoon, and here's Keith Hernandez. I'm Gary Cohen. The Mets go for the sweep of a four-game series against the Cubs, as they did last October when it counted the most. But, you know, you go back three days and think about the dire straits that this team seemed to be in coming off the sweep at the hands of the Nationals, and so much has changed in just a few few days. Well, what brings to mind is when the sky was falling in Washington on the last road trip and how Terry Collins handled the media with all the questions and he said you know you just got to keep everybody positive it's a long season and fans tend tend to interpret that as a player's not caring manager oh well here we go again well it is that way it's a hard game to figure out who would have thought the Mets would come in against a red hot Cubs team the best team in the National League with the best record come in here at home and are going for a four game sweep. And the Mets will have their ace Noah Syndergaard on the mound this afternoon coming off a non ace like performance his last time out. Well he got rattled his last outing and that was because of the stolen bases six stolen bases by the Washington Nationals. He was out after the three innings. Uh, they, he had a little trouble with Darno as far as getting on the same page but the positive with Noah it's another five days away another start. He is 11 and three in his young career here at City Field. John Lester lefty for the Cubs coming off a great month of June National League pitcher of the month. Well four and oh in June a terrific on a current uh, five game winning streak and uh, he is one and one in his short National League career against the uh, Mets. He is just a terrific left hander and they need a win today the Cubs and they're going to put it all on his shoulders. Mets beat Jake Arrieta last night as they did last October. They'll try and do the same to Lester. It's the Mets and the Cubs on a beautiful day in New York. All the action coming your way on SNY.
brought to you by Geico, the number one insurer in the New York market. By Kia, this 4th of July, save at the Kia Summer Sales Event. Learn more at TristateKiaDealers.com. By New York Lottery, take a break from the expected. Play scratch-off games from the New York Lottery. Be at City Field this Saturday, July 9th, when the Mets take on the Nationals at 7.15 p.m. The first 15,000 fans in attendance will receive a Mets fedora. Not quite like that. Courtesy of golf. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash tickets. We had a coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. The Indians' 14-game winning streak ended, but Rajay Davis hit for the cycle in their 9-6 loss to the Blue Jays. Jose Fernandez, the night after his pinch-hitting heroics, got beat up by the Braves. Give up nine runs in five and two-thirds in the Atlanta win. And Carlos Perez and C.J. Krohn, first teammates since 1936, to each have five hits and five RBIs in the same game in the Angels' slaughter of the Red Sox at Fenway. Noah Syndergaard trying to shake off the effects of his last start in D.C. and get the Mets a sweep. Syndergaard's first pitch coming up from City Field. But can you feel it right now, right now, all right? But can you feel it right now, all right? The last time the Cubs played at City Field before this series was game two of the National League Championship Series last October and Noah Syndergaard pitched that game and pitched brilliantly beat Jake Arrieta that night giving up just one run in five and two thirds and now Syndergaard faces the Cubs from the City Field mound again and how ironic the Mets beat Arrieta last night. There's the Cubs starting lineup 
The newcomer is Jamer Condelario. It's his major league debut, just 22 years old, a switch hitting third baseman. Chris Coughlin went on the disabled list, so that opened up a spot for Condelario. You see Chris Bryant's move to right field, and Javier Baez moves to shortstop after starting at second and third as Joe Madden continues to move his pieces around against Syndergaard. And your Land Rover numbers right there in front of your eyes for Noah Syndergaard. I mentioned his home record at 11 and 3, really outstanding. Uh, he needs to bounce back from that start where they stole six bags. It'll be interesting to see what the Cubs do when they get on the base if they try to push the envelope with the stolen bases. They don't have their best base dealer with Dexter Fowler out, but they've got some guys who can run a little bit. And then the Lexus defense. You got Lagaris getting his first start since his recall. And Curtis Granderson, after around four games out, is back in the lineup in right field. Matt Reynolds spells as dribble as Drubal Cabrera. And that's a good thing because Cabrera plays a lot and Reynolds is not a slouch out there at shortstop Rivera behind the plate. Well while Lagares was activated yesterday had a pinch hitting assignment and grounded into a double play but he's back in the starting lineup today feels as though he can play effectively with his partially torn ligament in his left thumb and he mans center field for the Mets today giving them two gold glovers in the outfield. Yeah it's their best uh, defense when Lagares is in center field and Cespedes is in left. Cespedes clearly a better left fielder than a center fielder. Then Zobris will lead it off for the Cubs. Zobris three for eleven in the series homeward last night against Eric Goodell to get the Cubs within a run in the seventh and then the Mets bullpen from there was just brilliant. Addison Reed an inning and a third striking out four and Jerry's familiar picking up Yet another save is 28. Syndergaard ready to go, and his first pitch of the afternoon to Zobrist is a fastball in for a strike, and we're underway. 98 on that first fastball from Syndergaard. A little overcast skies today, but a beautiful afternoon. A nice, huge crowd here at City Field. Syndergaard threw just 71 pitches in that start Monday night in Washington. He was throwing 100 miles an hour early in the game. He just threw 100 on his second pitch of this game. So the uh, small bone spur in his elbow that had been of concern and that he does not want to talk at all about did not appear to be an issue in Washington. It was just the base stealers that seemed to get to him. Loney going wide nice. to get it and hit Syndergaard on the run for the first out of the day. Very nice, Mr. Loney going in the hole there. Left-handed glove. So you don't have to do use a backhand at positions for a left hander gear. Very nice beautiful feed. Do you see the socks he's wearing. Oh I didn't notice that. Send the guard off the mound. It looks like Loney has got blue stirrups with oh. orange sanitary socks. Uh, can't, I, can't I don't say think that I've I, seen that look before. I can't say that I care for it. They don't actually look like sanitary socks. They look like some other <laughs> I orange sock that he's got underneath there. But it's a different kind of a look. Here's Jason Hayward hitting second in the order. And Hayward drives one toward the gap in left center. Back goes Lagaris near the wall. Oh. Reaches but can't get it. Cespedes plays it off the wall. And Hayward hustles into second base with a one out double. First ball fastball hitting from Hayward. Who was not having a terrific season with the bat. That's where you got to do. You throw that ball away off Syndergaard. You got to use that opposite field. Lagaris almost got to this ball. I think it ticked his glove, did it? No, just missed it. First chance in his first game back from the disabled list, and it was as difficult one as you could ask for. So now Chris Bryant who's homered twice in this series Bryant leads the National League with 23 and he flies one out to right playable for Granderson as he backpedals to the edge of the track tagging it second is Hayward he'll go over to third and that's the second out so the Cubs attacking early yep. in the count against Syndergaard back to back first pitch is going after his fastball and why not I mean his slider is so wicked and let's remember Gary. The Cubs have now faced Syndergaard twice. They faced him his first start in Wrigley last year, where they kind of roughed him up, and uh, they did it in the postseason. They know he's got a great breaking ball. What, do I want to hit a slider? Heck no. I'm gonna get a fastball. I'm on it. And that first start at Wrigley last May, Syndergaard hurt himself with four walks, lasted five and a third, pitched okay, but it uh, the Cubs got to him in the sixth inning, and he wound up losing that game six to one. 
So Anthony Rizzo bats with a runner at third and two out. Rizzo hit a two run homer yesterday against Bartolo Colon. All that Colon gave up in his six innings. Well, I'm now for the lows never stop improving, and you see what Syndergaard has done recently at home. Look at the walks and strikeouts. Yep. He loves to pitch here, obviously. He pitches pretty good everywhere. The only time he gets roughed up a bit is when they got some speedsters on the base. With Rizzo and Bryant, the Cubs are the only team in the National League that has two players with 20 or more home runs. Bryant leading the league with 23, Rizzo with 20. It's quite a 3 4 combination in the lineup. Cubs are second in the league in home runs with 107. Mets are just three home runs behind them. Hayward at third and two out. And Rizzo lead on that fastball, one and two. And Rizzo has shown a little blind spot upstairs. DeGrom took advantage of that in game two, pitched him upstairs. The Cubs are 0 for 18 in this series with runners in scoring position. And I think for all you kids out there, I mean, I, Barry Bonds comes to mind choking up on the bat. Check out Rizzo here, how much choked up he is on his bat. Every pitch. And he's got 20 plus home runs, so you don't have to be down the knob to hit home runs. It's a good inch choke up. One two coming and the curveball hit to right. Granderson closing ground but it drops for a base hit and the Cubs have an early run. Hayward's in to score. RBI single for Anthony Rizzo his 61st RBI gives the Cubs a one nothing lead. Breaking ball gear down where he likes it and got it out over the middle. Didn't break much just kind of hung. And good two strike hitting from Rizzo. So the Cubs have their first hit in this series with a runner in scoring position after going 0 for 18 to that point. Oh, he's hot. That's good. I like that comp competitive uh, fire, so to speak. Wasn't a bad pitch choice, just bad execution. But now, I, I'm sorry, Gar, go ahead. Now Wilson Contreras with a runner at first and two out, you were going to say. I just, I think since that little bit of that bone spur, I don't know if in the back of his, uh, of Syndergaard's mind, or not, but he really hasn't been snapping it since this has all come into the spotlight. His bone spur. Mm. Contreras chases the fastball away, and it's 0 and 2. Wilson Contreras, who caught the first two games of the series playing left field for the second straight day. It's not a real strong bottom half of the lineup here today for, for the Cubs. Rizzo not getting much of a lead at all at first and now he takes off on 0 and 2 and Contreras fouls it off. He uh, took a two step lead and then took a walking jump. Yep that's a walking lead and he would have had it so Syndergaard's got to pay attention. I think now that he's tried to sneak attack him there that he's not going to attempt another one right now. In the game today with Syndergaard and Lester you have the two pitchers who have been the most vulnerable to the stolen base in the major leagues over the last two years for different reasons Syndergaard because he's slow to the plate and Lester because he won't throw the ball to first. Fastball away to Contreras one and two. Twenty eight steals by far the most mm -hmm. pitchers given up in the league. Cubs are eleventh in the National League in steals. Fowler out of the lineup. Normally their leadoff hitter. He steals. So does Hayward. And everybody else kind of sneaks one here and there. Rizzo's got two this year. Oh, and it's inside and that hurts. Ferris gets drilled by the 99 mile an hour fastball. Well, that's a tough spot to get hit. That is going to hurt at 99 miles an hour too. It's only the second hit by pitch given up by Syndergaard this season. It's interesting. We've talked about this before, and I think we mentioned it in his last start. For the reputation that Noah has garnered because of his up and in pitch to Alcides Escobar last year and his subsequent comments, it's surprising how little he pitches inside. 
Well, I think also what exacerbates it, Gare, is he, I, and to this day, I can say it now, I clearly think when Utley got up and he threw that ball at him, I think he threw it at him on purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, so that kind of even brought it more into the spotlight, but into the normal, forefront. Normally, he works more middle away. Yes. I would love to see him pitch more inside. And thank goodness that didn't get him on the elbow. It got him on the forearm, a lot of flesh there, a lot of meat. So now two on and two out for the Major League debut of J. Merrick Condelario, who was born in New York, grew up in the Dominican. He's played 81 games in the minors at Double A AA and Triple A this year, had a combined 249 with seven home runs. He's a switch hitter. And Condelario mm. takes a pitch for a strike. Condelario called up today. Chris Coglin, who had to come out of last night's game with sore ribs, went on the disabled list, and Condelario right into the lineup and up in a big spot. In the first inning, a run home for the Cubs with two on and two out. And Syndergaard throws the changeup and gets ahead on the two. Or a slider. A slider. Yep. And back door. Still not a great break, Gare. I think more the change of pace fooled Candelario. 2 coming. And he struck him out. To end the inning. First strikeout for Syndergaard, but the Cubs cash a run on Rizzo's two out hit. That's come to bat trailing 1 0. Back from the disabled list goes into the leadoff spot where Brandon Nimmo did such a nice job the last couple of days. But with a lefty going, Lagares is in there. Matt Reynolds gets a spot start for us. Drupal Cabrera, whose knee has been acting up, so he gets a day off. And Rene Rivera back together with Syndergaard getting the start behind the plate. And there's John Lester having a terrific season. We mentioned 4 0 in June on a current five game winning streak. That's beat Lester in game one of the National League Championship Series last year. Daniel Murphy and Travis Darno both took him deep in that game. Juan Lagares had two hits against him in that game, and it's Lagares to face Lester leading off. Lester's been red hot. He's second in the National League in ERA at 2.03. The one crimp in his game is an inability to be able to throw the ball to bases. Mm. And you would think that you would want to try and test him and maybe bunt against him early in the game. Well, why not? And there's the defense right there. Not worried about two strikes now, obviously, so they're playing back, but straight up against Lagares. Lagares pops one up. Ross out, Rizzo in, and it's Ross to make the catch for the first out. And we'll take a look at the Coors Light defense. Jason Hayward. In center field, only his ninth start. Contreras, the catcher, is sixth start and left. 
And Baez, of course, is a very versatile infielder, a very good glove at second base, it's third, and pretty pretty fine at short. And David Ross, the veteran, who was the backup catcher, who's done a heck of a job here and found a home in Chicago. They're carrying three catchers. Ross catches Lester exclusively now with uh, Miguel Montero and Contreras, the other two. Here's Curtis Granderson back in the lineup after missing the last four starts with a calf injury. Curtis had just started hitting before the calf, calf started acting up. Four hits in his last seven at bats. And in there against the lefty today because he's done well against Lester in the past. Got a couple of home runs, hitting 273 for his career against Lester. Also had a hit against him in the LCS last year. Well, it's interesting how the Mets, without Curtis in the lineup, basically uh, took the first three games here. And you know, Brandon Nimmo has done a terrific job, and they got a big shift on the infield, the big pyramid shift. How about Hayward playing him over in left center and giving uh, them all I, the right? You know what? I, I see it all the time. It's but like cross purposes. So obviously the charts show Curtis going in the air. The opposite field. It's pretty much Chris Bryant in right is straight up. He's on an island. I mean there's a huge gap in, in right central. 2 2 from Lester and Granderson hits one right where Hayward's playing but over his head deep toward the wall. It's out of here. Curtis Granderson back in the lineup with his 14th home run of the year and he ties the game at one. Welcome back. Another first inning home run for Granderson. He has specialized in leadoff home runs. Today he hits one out of the two hole. Well I think Curtis is going to see that two hole a little bit more. Particularly against left handers. And this is a fastball out over the plate. You can see he let go of one hand, the ball was away, and Hayward runs out of room. There it is, outside corner, belt high. He crushed it. 14 home runs for Granderson, and half of them, seven of the 14, have come in the first inning. Now you went as Cespedes. Here it is again, and Lester's reaction. No, you know, that's a veteran. He's done it before. Don't think off the bat he was expecting that ball to leave the yard, but Curtis crushed it to left center. Lester has been, and I'll wait for after this pitch. Lester has been really, he's been tough on lefties and righties. He's given up 11 home runs this year, now 12. That's only the second one against left handers. Lefties hitting just 193 against him, but we mentioned Curtis has had success against him. That's the third time now he's homered against Lester. And again, Cespedes has to move his feet on the cutter, and it's two and one. And the Mets have hit 19 first inning home runs, led by Granderson's seven. And they lead the league in that category. Cespedes, two for 13 lifetime against Lester. And he pops one foul back and out of play. That home run by Curtis Granderson means. $2,000 for No Kid Hungry, enough to provide 20,000 healthy meals, courtesy of City. One thing about Lester, he's given up 12 home runs. 11 of the 12 now have been solo. Gave up one two run homer this year to Buster Posey. Everything else has been a solo shot. Hmm. Toward the middle of the diamond, nice backhand stop by Zobrist, and he throws out Cespedes. It was a hot shot and Zobris playing up the middle position well to throw him out. It's very interesting. We've seen a lot of clubs. Look at Zobris behind the pitcher there just to the right of second base. We've seen a lot of clubs. The Nationals played uh, Cespedes that way. But we've seen Cespedes go to right, right field on the ground. So but they got it done that time. So two out of nobody on now Neil Walker who last night delivered the keynote for the Mets a two run homer in the first against Jake Arrieta his 15th home run of the year. It's so funny because remember last October when Arrieta started against the Mets in the LCS he gave up a first inning home run to Daniel Murphy. He comes back hadn't lost a 
road game in 19 starts. That's pulled foul. 19 starts in the regular season. He had not lost a road game. And again, it's the Mets' second baseman who takes him deep in the first <laughs> inning and ruins his night. Well, there you have it right there. He moves ahead of Daniel Murphy. He had a little lull there for a while where he didn't hit some home runs, but now kind of picking it back up. One and two to Walker. And if you hadn't noticed, folks, the Mets are in their uh, old 86 homies tonight, today. Neil wearing, uh, wearing Howard Johnson's jersey. That's right. Breaking ball taken low, two and two. I noticed they've got our emblem on the shoulder there, the left shoulder or forearm, or not forearm, bicep. Humorous. Upper arm. Humorous. Fred, that's that 25th anniversary match, right. even though it was only the 24th anniversary. Right. <laughs> Which I always thought was kind of odd. 2 2 coming. Fouled away. They decided to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Mets, who were born in 1962, in the 25th year, rather right. than on the 25th anniversary, which right. would have been 1987. It worked out pretty good. Yeah, I guess. Maybe if they celebrated in 87, you would have won then, too. Well, we won 90 plus the next year also. Would have been the wild card. Yes, we would have. And a very awkward swing by Walker to stay alive. How did he do that? Um, by the grace of God, this is completely fooled and gets a piece of it. Still in the at bat. Like he was using, using a cricket bat. <laughs> That keeps him alive for another pitch. The 20th of the inning coming up for Lester. And Walker goes down in the changeup to end the inning. But the Mets get even. Curtis Granderson, after missing four games with a calf injury, back in the lineup and striking early again. His 14th of the year gets the Mets even. 1-1 one, one after one at City Field. Starters, career numbers for John Lester and Noah Syndergaard. Uh, big discrepancy there, huh? 301 starts for Lester, the veteran, former Red Sox, and the youngster. Javier Baez leads off the second. Baez, who started games in this series at third base and second base, came off the bench last night, and now he's starting a shortstop, displaying his versatility through this four-game series. 
That's a three infielders on the left side against him. And Bias takes one to the right side for a base hit. It's almost like DeGrom pitched Baez beautifully. And DeGrom, if you recall, in that second game was really pitched upstairs. And you can stay out of the strike zone with Baez. He came up with those nine home runs the second half two years ago. He was swinging from his rear end. And he's kind of calmed that down a bit, but he still chases bad pitches. You don't have to throw him strikes. Now David Ross making his first start of the series. Ross appeared as a pinch hitter last night and grounded out. David Ross in what he expects to be his final big league season. Not quite getting the um, the send off of a David Ortiz who's announced it's his final season. But nonetheless Ross a well respected veteran he's had him having himself a nice year. Six home runs already this season for the 39 year old. He's always had pop in that bat. He is a, what you call a journeyman. In baseball parlance and he has bounced around but found a home here a good defensive catcher. Doesn't run well. But he catches up to one. He can hit it a long way. He's played for seven different teams. His best home run total came in 2006 when he hit 21 for the Reds. And Syndergaard misses outside with the fastball. One and one. He's had a bit limited playing time down the backside of his career here. And he's made the most of it as a backup catcher. Yeah, he's never really been a starter at, at any point in his career. Most uh, bats he's ever had in a season is 311. Syndergaard paying some attention to Baez who's stolen five bases this year in six tries. And as he should keep an eye on him. But what's interesting to watch and I think is that will it throw Syndergaard off of his rhythm. Baez gets a help. Got a lead and he picked him off. He was ready to take off and Syndergaard gets his revenge. Well he's been working on it. That's his first pickoff I believe. It's a nice weapon to have when they're running blind on you. And you know what you can do as a as an opposing team against Syndergaard you don't have to steal. You can take just a huge lead but in a defensive it's kind of a quasi defensive lead but huge to get Syndergaard's attention. Well that seemed to be the biggest piece of it against the Nats in that last start that he just seemed to be distracted from his pitching because of all the steals. There it is right there. A perfect timing. Well done. Hey it's all a learning process. A lot of these guys are learning in the big leagues. One and two to Ross with the pitcher Lester on deck. Good cut by Ross there in that high cheddar. You see the last two starts not the best after the Kansas City start that's when he complained of the little elbow discomfort and had the elbow checked out which led to so much conversation the last 10 days. And he had the rough <laughs> outing against the Nats with all the steals mm. and Ross strikes out on the slider second strike out for Syndergaard and that's the second out of the inning. I still have noticed that Syndergaard's slider he hasn't this is this is a not a great slider right there Gary. I mean that stayed flat and we've always noticed on Syndergaard slider how sharp it was and how it broke down. I'm seeing a lot of flat sliders from him and I'm just wondering if it's just in the his elbow in the back of his mind. Well, also I mean we, we know that Steven Matz also has a bone spur and Matz has basically ditched his slider because of the discomfort that it causes. John Lester the batter. Lester has spent the majority of his career in the American League began his career 0 for 66 he's actually done a lot better since then. Less seven hits in his last 67 at bats. Which is a lot better than 0 for 66. But now he goes down on three pitches against Syndergaard. Third strikeout for Noah he helps himself out with the pickoff 1 1 in the second.
must be a Sunday afternoon. Sunday in New York. Bobby Darren. Big City taking a nap. There's your prize of trivia question. Last Cubs teammates with 60 or more RBIs each before the All Star break. That is before Bryant and Rizzo, each of whom have 60 plus. Wilmer Flores takes outside as we start the home second. Flores 0 for his last 14. Yeah, it's been a struggle. With the specter of Jose Reyes looming over his shoulder. And he drives oh. one deep to center field, chasing Hayward back near the wall. It's out of here. Flores snaps that 0 for 14 with his fourth home run of the year to put the Mets up 2 to 1. who had some really bad at bats against Arietta last night takes a solid one against Lester to get the Mets in front. Got to get that ball down John Lester belt high right down the pipe. Wilmer said I'll take that. Nicely done Wilmer. So the Mets with a couple of solo home runs through the first five batters against John Lester. Well he got a cookie right here as they say I hate that term I don't know why I said it beautiful swing. Look out your head. Oh, please. Oh. By the way, what that way? ball went to almost the same <laughs> spot in the uh, oh. in the bleachers there that Granderson's home run went. Put him in the ring. He can take a punch. I think next time he'll bring his glove. Cutter from Lester, and he's ahead on Loney one and two. Only four for 13 in this series, couple of doubles and a home run. Took an 0 for last night. And it's got to feel good for snapping an 0 for 14. Loney struggled at the plate last night, but he had a great game defensively. Started a terrific double play with a tagged out Arietta at second. Also made a great scoop of a low throw. In at the knees for a call strike three. Well, Loney didn't think so. Nick Lentz, the rookie home plate umpire, gets an earful, as Laz Diaz oh. did all night last night. Laz Diaz was. Uh, uh, you know what? That's borderline. That could go either way. It wasn't as egregious as Laz Diaz. I mean, geez. How about the one he called on Javier Baez in the ninth oh. inning last night for Familia? I mean, it was great for the Mets, but what a terrible call that yeah. was. Yeah. We used to scream at the umpires in the dugout, uh, wake up, you're missing a good game. <laughs> Matt Reynolds giving as Dribble Cabrera a day off. Reynolds 37 bats deep into his big league career drives one toward the right field corner that's going to be away from Bryant and up against the wall. Reynolds digging for second and he slides in safely with a one out double. Boy oh boy the Mets. Home cooking. Reynolds has done a terrific job since his call up. Got some clutch hits. Not an easy job for a youngster to spot play. Inner at balls down the middle and he opts to go the other way with it. Well done. That's his fifth double through his first 38 big league at bats. So the Mets have a runner at second and one out for Rene Rivera. Rivera getting the start with Syndergaard today after Travis Darno caught Noah's last start and that didn't go so well. Rivera oh. gets a hold of one out to left center. Back goes Hayward to the warning track at the wall. It's out of here. Rene Rivera goes deep. A two run homer. Third of the year for Rivera, and it's 4 to 1 New York. The Mets hit five home runs against Jason Hamill on Friday night, and they're playing home run derby against John Lester this afternoon. Boy, the ball is carrying here. It's warmed up.
fastball. They Mets are all over Lester's fastball, and both all three home runs in that same vicinity. Eight batters deep, three home runs against John Lester, who had given up 11 home runs in his first 16 starts. So the Cubs are mortal. Well, the Cubs have been carried by their pitching. I mean, their offense is great too, but their pitching, especially their starting pitching, had been extraordinary coming into this series. John Lackey pitched okay on Thursday night, six and a third, two runs, but Hamill got pummeled. Arietta gave up four runs in five and a third, and now Lester has taken it on the chin early in this one. Sindergaard takes inside two and two. It's been a little more of a stumble for the Cubs recently. They've seen their lead shrink to nine games in the National League Central, so substantial, but not as large as it had been. Well, they're four and nine in their last 13 games. Well, think about this. The Mets swept the National League Championship Series from the Cubs last October. Before that, the last time the Mets swept a four game series from the Cubs was 1985. And that's what they're trying to do today. I wish I could remember that. I bet you I had a lot to do with that. I bet you did. I'm sure that Dave Freed will let us know exactly how much. I always hit good in Wrigley, David. You can book that. <laughs> well, the sweep, the four game sweep in 85 was at Shea. Oh, was that Shea? Yeah. Didn't Syndergaard did not swing, and he draws the walk. Something else for the Cubs to be upset at Las Diaz about. So there's the first walk by Lester, who's given up three home runs in a game for the first time this year and the seventh time in his career. Little toe tap by Syndergaard. And we've seen worse called yeah, strikes. He got away with one there. You know, in my opinion, he didn't swing. I think they overdo it. Chris Vazio, the pitching coach. You never think they swing. I know. <laughs> so. Well, the Mets picking up where they left off last October. Lester gave up two runs in that game one start against the Mets back in the LCS. And three more today. Take advantage of a special UN assessment is offer four tickets for fifty two dollars during the July 4th through 6th game starting tomorrow against the Marlins tickets through this offer will be sold on a first come first serve basis and are subject to availability for tickets visit Mets dot com slash vote yo today the giveaway item was the UN assessment is compression sleeve so there's parakeet yellow all over the ballpark. Is Juan Lagares up for the second time, and he takes a curveball yeah. from Lester for a strike. Yeah, Lester's got to start mixing in some uh, twos and threes instead of throwing number one. Tim Tuffle's got the compression sleeve. Fastball off the plate, a ball and a strike to Lagares, who fouled out to the catcher his first time up. Only the second time this year that Lester has given up four or more runs in a game. Gave up five in a game in San Francisco back in May. Hmm. I mean, he has been red hot. He had an extraordinary month of June. Made six starts in June, went 4 0 with a 1.41 ERA. Allowed just one run in seven and two thirds his last start in Cincinnati. Rest his chin on his glove. As he gets his sign. Lagares takes one the other way, and that'll fall for a base hit. Syndergaard around second. He's going to dig for third. Trying for two is Lagares, and Bryant's throw is not in time. A double for Lagares, and the Mets have runners at second and third. Well, one thing the Mets had lacked with Lagares out, and one of the guys that can run and Lagares really is the best guy at cutting the corners when he rounds a bag he can really really cut it sharp no big bend here he just gets it almost in a straight line he's the best at it on this ball club 
You got Bryant playing right field, who's relatively inexperienced at that position. Took him a long time to get there, and Lagares had it in front of him the whole way, and makes it safely. So now Granderson, who homered his first time up, the Cubs down by three runs of their infield back. And Granderson lines one in the center field. That's a base hit. Wow. Syndergaard scores. Lagares pulls it at third. Granderson with his second RBI of the day, and it's five to one New York. And the Mets are battering Johnny Lester. Well, Lagares gets a bad read here. That's a fastball down and away. Nicely done, Curtis. First ball, fastball hitting. I'm not going to get on Lagares too much here because it's a short hop, but you've got to know where your center fielder is. And a lot of that is instinctual. If he breaks off the gun, he's going to score with his legs. No action yet in the Cubs bullpen. Four runs are home here in the second. The Mets lead five to one, and Cespedes with a chance to blow the doors off this game early. Lagares at third, Granderson at first, and one out. Infield remains back. And it's in for a strike. Cubs hoping to turn two against Cespedes, who grounded out hard to Zobrist behind the second base bag his first time. Five hits in this inning, and there has a, only one soft one. That was Lagares's soft liner to right field. Four of the five hits in the inning have been for extra bases. And it's in tight. Ball and a strike. You know what's funny is that you know, pitcher comes in on a winning streak. He's not going to win all 32 in a row. He's got to break the streak once in a while. It's always the pitcher that had a long streak broken like Syndergaard that it's coming back angry and ready to start a new streak you got to worry about. Well it's one thing to lose a game. It's very strange though to see a quality pitcher like Lester get battered like this. Well Seaver got battered a few times in his career. Sure. You know, it's, it's but just, I mean to do it against Arietta and Lester back to back days. Well, and I know Arietta had, had a few stumbles the last few weeks before this. But the Mets have all of a sudden turned their offense around. That's a broken bat liner for a base wow. hit, and everything's going right for New York. Lagaris is in to score. Cespedes with a broken bat hit to make it six to one. No one up in the bullpen for the Cubs. This is like five runs like lightning. And that's those light bats. That was Laura on the label and bat shatters, but the assessment is so strong. And that's going to get the Cubs moving out there in right center field in their bullpen. Cubs have already had one early exit in this series. Jason Hamill went just four innings on Friday night. But Lester getting rocked here at the second. Mets have five runs and six hits in the inning. And Neil Walker is the ninth man to bat, and there's still only one out. By the way, in that last regular season four game sweep, the Mets had over the Cubs in 1985. I'm afraid to say that you only played in three of the four games in that series, and he went two for ten. With an RBI. <laughs> <laughs> You are you are just Mr. Brightside. <laughs> I contributed. <laughs> Here's Neil Walker, and the curveball swung and missed. Walker struck out his first time up. Wilmer Flores, who got the whole inning started with a home run, is now on deck. That's got a run in the first on Granderson's home run. They've got two more home runs from Flores and Rivera here in the second. Takes the cutter for a strike and it's 0 2. Spencer Patton on call in the Cubs bullpen as Lester struggles here in the second. Through 20 pitches in the first inning, 28 more in this inning. Granderson at second, Cespedes at first with one out. And Walker has to move his feet, 1 and 2. He's just not locating his fastball Lester trying to come in on the right handers and missing inside cutter is normally a great weapon for him against right hand hitters. But nothing's going where he wants it to right now.
One two coming to Walker and he'll shoots one foul. Remember too, Gary. This is the first meeting of these two ball clubs since the Mets won the National League flag in their backyard, and um, they come in here probably with a little chip on their shoulder, and the Mets are taking it to them. Well, remember the Cubs swept the regular season series from the Mets last year, won all seven games before the Mets turned the tables in the postseason. That kicks away from Ross, and the runners will move up. Granderson to third, Cespedes to second on the wild pitch. One of the third wild pitch of the year for Lester. Cutter just didn't get his body in front. So now the Cubs will have to bring the infield in. They're down by five runs. And with second and third and one out, they'll bring everybody in. So that opens up more space for Walker to try and get one through and get a couple of runs on. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse. Walker shoots it right through the hole for a base hit. Granderson scores. Lagaris will be uh, Cespedes will be stopped at third, and Walker contributes with an RBI hit to make it seven to one. Oh my goodness! Six runs are home in the inning against John Lester. This is a shellacking. Of a nine and three pitcher. One of the best in the game just getting toasted. Lester came in with the second best ERA in the league at 2.03, 1.41 in June, but he's given up seven earned runs in an inning and a third. And now Flores, who led off this inning with a home run, bats for the second time. Innocently. Curveball in for a strike. He's been getting hurt on his fastball, Gary. He's just not mixing in a lot of curves. What a funny game. Well, Patton is ready to go in the bullpen for the Cubs if Joe Madden needs to make an early change. Flores yeah. wails at the curveball and it's 0 and 2. And it's the first time he's thrown back to back hooks. I mean, they're covering his fastball. James Loney on deck. Cespedes at third, Walker at first with one out. Six runs home in the inning. And Flores takes the fastball away, one and two. That's 35 pitches now in this inning for Lester, and still only one out. One two coming. And the curveball lined over short. Oh. That's a base hit. Oh. Cespedes comes home with the seventh run of the inning. Wow. Well, he got a couple of strikes with curveballs. And the third one, Flores hooks in the left for his second hit of the inning and his second RBI of the inning. That's got to be it. Yep. And it is. Wow. The Mets taking it to one of the best pitchers in baseball. They are hitting everything. Eight hits in this second inning have produced seven runs. And Lester will leave after an inning and a third with the roof having caved in. Good Lord. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Verizon. Lester out early. Spencer Patton coming in for the Cubs. Mets up eight to one in the second. We'll be right back.
very out of market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. MLB.TV Premium includes a premium subscription to At Bat Premium. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Second time in the series, Spencer Patton's been called on as the long man. Yeah, he pitched in game two, Gare, uh, relieved Hamill, who got knocked out pretty much like Lester, but Hamill got couldn't get out of the fourth. James Loney struck out earlier in the inning, and he takes high and wide from Patton. Lester went an inning and a third, nine hits, eight runs so far, one walk, two strikeouts, one wild pitch, and three home runs, and he's responsible for two more on base. The inning and a third, the shortest outing of John Lester's career in 301 career starts. Mm. Somebody asked Terry Collins earlier today, do you think you guys are in the Cubs' head? And Terry dismissed it. But, of course. But you have to wonder. Well, we'll see what happens when they meet up after the All Star break in Wrigley. The Cubs will be uh, very in a very feisty mood, I'm sure. Well, what interests me is, you know, after the Mets had such an offensive brownout over the last couple of weeks, to have the quality of at bats they've had against really good pitchers and how quickly that has changed in the course of a few days. You know what I feel I. I'll get it in after this. Is that. I think that Nimmo with his smile. And his exuberance. is kind of a breath. Of fresh air for this ball club they were down. And he brought a little energy with him. And he's been in the middle of things as. As far as offensively whether he's getting a base hit or driving in a run he's scoring runs. Scored last night on that walk before Walker hit gave the Mets a two nothing lead on his 15th home run. He's done a terrific job. You need those guys that add a little levity. Mm. Does that I mean is that really a thing that that a young player can come up and by virtue of a little bit of success and the enthusiasm can inspire other players. I think it can be a shot in the arm. Absolutely. I mean. Uh, when your team is going bad and it can be in a little bit of a doldrum and someone can come in and inject that little shot of adrenaline. Tony walks. So Patton who walked the first man to face him the other night does that again. And I think Ronnie called it. He, uh, he said he's Hunter Pence like and I agree and Hunter Pence plays with such uh, awkwardly with such exuberance and energy uh, and I think that that's what he's brought here. Uh, I'm not saying I can't say on oh, 100% but my feeling is he is giving him a little bit of a boost. Good for him. Good for him. So now the Mets have the bases loaded for Matt Reynolds who drove a double to right field earlier in the inning the 12th man to bat in this second inning. Remember the Mets set a club record earlier this season when they put together a 12 run inning against the Giants. They've got seven on the board in this inning with one out. Mm. Yeah, Patton having trouble throwing strikes. Well, this is a day game after a night game. A lot of everyday players out there say this could be a long one. Nothing tires you out more, Gary, than when it's a lopsided. Win or you're on the back end of it. You're on the on the losing side of it, and you're out there standing around for nine innings in a very very long game. It's lucky it's not swelteringly hot. Already 44 pitches in this inning, and Reynolds swings at the breaking ball and misses one and two. Rene Rivera, who homered earlier in this second inning, is on deck. So the Cubs are currently on a four game lose a three game losing streak and the most they've lost is four this season which has been very recent. Well this is the final game for the Cubs of an 11 game road trip. They lost three out of four in Miami then they swept three from the Reds but they had to go 15 innings to win one of those games so that taxed their bullpen a little bit. 
Now they've lost all three games of this series, so they're four and six on the trip. You see their lead has shrunk to nine games over the Cardinals, still a substantial lead, the largest of any division. Bases loaded one out with seven runs home in the inning. And Reynolds pops one up. And Rizzo should have a play, shading his eyes. He knows that he manages to get to it and make the grab. Wow. It's not an overtly sunny day right now, and Rizzo not wearing sunglasses, yep. but apparently there must have been enough glare to cause a problem. We had a tough time. I used to always wear those flip flip downs. Even on an overcast day, because you never know when that sun will pop out. Just for a, a little insurance policy. So now two out. And Rene Rivera, who had a two run homer earlier in this inning, will be the 13th man to bat. And takes a strike from Patton. Patton, when he came in on Friday night behind Jason Hamill, walked his first batter, then retired the next three. He walked his first batter today, and now trying to get through the inning without any further damage. Two of the runners on base are Lester's responsibility, one is his. And Rivera takes a big cut, 0 and 2. Rivera has always been something of an all or nothing hitter, and he got all his first time up today. His third home run among his 13 hits this year. Walker, Flores, and Loney, the base runners, with two out. And Rivera takes high. That was the 50th pitch of the inning. Worthy of seven runs. One, two from Patton. And Rivera fouls it off. Spencer Patton, who had a little big league time with Texas each of the last two years. Just his ninth appearance for the Cubs. Twenty-eight years old from Southern Illinois at Edwardsville. Edwardsville, not Carbondale. It's Cardinal Country down there. Yep. And Rivera strikes out in the inning comes to a close but a huge one for the Mets as they knock Lester out of the box 13 men come to bat seven score home runs from Flores and Rivera and the Mets off to a big start going for a four game sweep of the Cubs eight to one as we go to the third at City Field.
As we asked before Bryant and Rizzo who were the last Cubs teammates with 60 or more RBIs each before the All Star break and that would be back in 1970 the great Billy Williams and the. Um, recently deceased Jim Hickman yeah. just died last week an original Met who had his best season for the Cubs in 1970. Well Noah Syndergaard much in the spot that Jacob deGrom was the other night staked to a huge early lead. He'll face this top of the batting order second time through Ben Zobris Jason Hayward and Chris Bryant in the third. Zobris grounded out his first time up. A stunning turn of events with oh. John Lester leaving after an inning and a third the shortest start of his career. He gave up more runs in this game than he did the entire month of June. Well this is very good for Syndergaard too. Lazy fly ball to center off the bat of Zilbrist. And Ligaris puts it away one out. You give Syndergaard now a big lead an eight a seven run lead early and he doesn't have to really pitch in a real tight ball game. Hopefully I mean this could get away. I've seen bigger leads get blown. I'm sure you have too Gare. But it gives him not just a little breathing room it gives him a lot of breathing room where he can just relax and focus on his command. Here's Jason Hayward who drove a double to left center and scored a run in the first. They were two for nine in this series. Keith, when you watch Jason Hayward, you saw him when he first came up, when he had that great rookie right. season for the Braves. What what's the difference now between between Hayward now and Hayward then? I've seen a lot of changes in his swing. Uh, he used to really uh, like Chris Bryant. You remember we talked about his stride on the first two games of the series. How Chris Bryant right handed strides towards the first to towards first base. Well Hayward did that towards third base. He's eliminated that. It's not as extreme. Popped up into shallow right center and Walker out to call to win. You could say OK he had the bad shoulder really bad shoulder and. He did, has never been the same since then, but he had a 20 plus home run year after the search. After the 27, right? Yep. So he's got a very stiff swing. He doesn't lock, he locks his hips. He just doesn't get a lot of lower body into it. It's a very a disjointed mechanical swing to me. I mean, as a layman, it just looks like he's dragging the bat through the strike zone. Uh, that's because of the mechanics of his, of, of the fluidity of his swing. Baseball, the swing should be fluid, like a golf swing. But I've seen guys with mechanical swings that had hell of a career. Excuse my language. Brian pops one up into shallow left. And Cespedes comes on. And a very easy inning for Noah Syndergaard. It took him to seven pitches to get through the top of the third with an eight to one lead.
you know, this fan base has always been behind this team, good and bad, you're going to have intense rivalries. Anything that involves intrigue in sports, there's got to be that guy that is not only good at it, but almost embraces it. Today on Mets Insider, the teams you love to beat, the players you love to hate, get an inside look at the Mets' biggest rivalries, past and present. On Mets Insider, presented by W.B. Mason today after the postgame, only on SNY. Just saw was a clip from that show. I find it interesting, Keith, that over the years the Mets' prime rivalries have changed. In the yes. early days of the franchise, the most important rivalries were with, with the Dodgers and the Giants, the teams that had deserted New York. And when they came back, the crowds were enormous. Mm. Syndergaard lines one to left, and on comes Contreras to grab it one out. When you played with the Mets at first in 84 the Cubs were a big rival and then then it was the Cardinals. It was when I came to the Mets everybody said the Phillies were the big rivalry and I felt no rivalry coming here and I felt like the Mets didn't have a rivalry that's how I felt and coming from St. Louis it was traditionally the two old teams that were National League teams it was just a perfect uh, marriage or in this case a perfect divorce I guess. So uh, what it evolved is what's evolved here. It could evolve here with a Cub team that looks like it's a team of the future it's going to continue to win and a Met team that looks like a team of the future it's going to continue to win. But the only difference now is the three divisions you're not you're not in the same division and that's what hurts Do the Mets really have a real strong rival in division it looks like it's going to be Washington but I don't feel that but, but that's changed I mean in the uh, you know late 90s early 2000s it was the Braves that was the great yes. rivalry, particularly Chipper Jones and you know after John Rocker's stuff that that really burgeoned into a huge rival but then you know later in the 2000s it became the Phillies because the Mets and Phillies were battling right. out every year now it's the Nats so that's kind of changeable. I, I, I don't feel as though the Mets have a particular rival the way the Cubs and Cardinals, Cardinals have each or the other. Giants, Dodgers, right, or the Yankees and the Red Sox. It's, Correct. It, it kind of changes based on the fortunes of the teams. Two and two to Lagares, and of course, in a certain different respect, the Yankees are the Mets' rival. They're the rival for the attention of the biggest right. city in the country. Just happen to be in the other league. Lagares dumped a double down the right field line and scored in that seven run second inning. And he flies this one to shallow right and Bryant comes in to get it. So I have a question and I'm not a New Yorker. I grew up on the West Coast. When the New York Giants and Brooklyn Dodgers shared the town, the city, was there an intense rivalry there? Of course. Well, they played 22 times a year. Okay. It was. Uh, it was always said that New York was more of a National League town and what was interesting was that when the Dodgers and the Giants left after the 57 season you would have thought that people would have flocked to go see the Yankees but the Yankees attendance during that stretch from 58 to 61 when they were the only team in town actually went down even though they had great teams. Hmm. Curtis Granderson first game back in the lineup after missing four games with a calf injury and he has come back with a rush a home run his first time up a run scoring single his second time up. So Granderson may be refreshed after a few days on the sidelines. We mentioned he had just started to swing the bat well when he went out of the lineup and having a big day today. Three and zero from Patton, and Granderson draws a four-pitch walk, so he's on base for the third straight time. Today's cold hard facts brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. The Mets continue to score their the highest percentage of runs in the majors on the home run ball, including half of their runs so far today. Well, that's right into Sandy Alderson's philosophy. Remember, he had that meeting with us when he first took over, and he, I remember him distinctly saying. And it's, it's no great revelation. The team that out homers the other team is going to win X amount of times the percentages it's over 70 percent yeah, of the so, time. And it, so this is makes Sandy smile. Well the problem is if it's a problem 
is what happens on the days that you don't homer because you're not going to homer every day. That's mm. taken the other way a base hit for Cespedes and he's two for three. Let me tell you something. Cespedes can hit. And that's no great revelation. I mean he can when he doesn't try to hit a home run he can go the other way like this. That's just smart hitting. And he knows how to turn it on for the home run swing and go for the bomb. He's a classic number four hitter even though in this lineup he's hitting third. Do you think he's a guy who in addition to his obvious power could hit 300 in the majors. I think if he wanted to yes. What did Ted Williams say about Willie McCovey. He said Willie McCovey had the greatest swing of his generation and he said if McCovey would forego home runs one year he'd hit three he'd hit 340. That's pretty high praise coming from Big Teddy ball, yep. Teddy ball game. Of course Ted was able to hit for a high average and hit home runs. And also McCovey had a swing very similar to Ted. They're both big tall lanky guys. Neil Walker had an RBI single his last time up. Batting here with two out and two on. And the hit batting right handed now batting left handed and he takes low and away one and one. John Lester an inning in the third eight runs nine hits. First time he's ever given up seven runs in an inning in his major league career. Shortest outing of his major league career. Walker mm -mm. held the swing in time two and one. Lester's ERA started the day at 2.03. It goes up to 2.67. Mm. That's uh, that's a big jump halfway through the season. And by the way, halfway through the season is today. This is the Mets' 81st game of the year. Oh, completed one half of the schedule after today's game. The countdown. Three to one. Countdown to what? Countdown to uh, always count up to 81, and you always count down from 81. You never count up the 162. It drives you crazy. Unless you're John Lester and you're just waiting for five days to pass so you can pitch again. <laughs> he's, gonna, he's got six and a half more innings at least on that bench to, to rue how his day has gone. There's a strike mm -hmm. three and two. By the way, we talked about you were talking about uh, winning with the home run. When the Mets don't hit a home run this year, they're five and 22. But I wonder it, what it, the it, it, what it, I wonder it's what is not that black and white. What's the average major league record? What's the average winning percentage for a team? It's not that black and white. The Mets haven't hit in a clutch. Well, that's the point. You know, so of course. Three two coming and Walker fouls it up. Well, that's that's right. I mean, the Mets are hitting 204 coming into the day with runners in scoring position. The next lowest average in the National League with runners in scoring position is the Phillies, who are at 231. Wow. I mean. So that's how far in the doldrums they have been in that category. Now, if they can, you know, if they can make some progress with that, that obviously makes them a much more potent offensive team. You know, people ask Terry all the time, are you going to, you know, play more small ball? And Terry says, we're not built to bunt or hit and run or steal bases. We don't have that kind of player. But that doesn't mean you can't get hits with runners in scoring position. Mets need one more really quality bat. Fly ball into shallow center. And Hayward comes on to call. And that retires the side. Mets strand a couple in the third. We played three at City Field on Sunday afternoon. It's 8 to 1 New York.
by the 2017 Audi A4 in your tri-state Audi dealers. Yep, folks, it's not a county fair. It's a ball game. Noah Syndergaard with an 8-1 to one lead as we go to the fourth. Hi, girls. Hope you're enjoying the ball game. Anthony Rizzo drove in the Cubs run with a two-out single in the first. One of three hits Syndergaard's a lot over the first three innings. Rizzo, Contreras, and Condelario bat for the Cubs in the fourth. Syndergaard had a seven-pitch inning in the third. So you're the Cubs. You're at the end of a long road trip. You're yep. down by seven runs in the fourth inning. Yep. How difficult is it to fight the idea that you, you know, kind of swing the bat, get on the bus, get out of here? Well, you're never out of it. You keep plugging away here until it gets a little bit later in the ball game. I've seen seven run leads fall apart. Most of the time they don't. There's the old saying that what Gene Tennis and Jim caught when I was with 82 with the Cardinals and it's just turn the page. This game is over. Move forward. They go home and they play three with Cincinnati. They got to beef up on Cincinnati. Then they end with three in Pittsburgh before the All-Star break. And if they can finish strong going into the All-Star break. This series is all forgotten and guess what. Mets come to town their second series after the All-Star right. break and that could be a, a little revenge. All right, Mets go Philly Chicago coming right out of the break. I'm looking forward to that series. I don't have it. You and Ron. We well, come along. No 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 that's OK. We'll find a space for you. I'm uh, no. Rizzo gets tied up and he went around for strike three. So Syndergaard up and in at 98. You're we talking about Rizzo a little blind up and in. Well, he got tied up here. Up. That's what I said from the beginning. When Syndergaard can learn to throw up here, it's hard to lay off. That ball's got rise. At least in the mind's eye, it does. At the hitter's eye, Nolan Ryan had that. Seaver had that. All the hard throwers. Here's Contreras, who was hit on the arm by a pitch his first time up, and he takes a fastball strike. Contreras started the first two games behind the plate, now playing his second straight game in left field. The versatility on this Cubs team, I think, is just about unprecedented. That's line right at Walker, and he picks it off in the second out. You know, a lot of teams have players who can move around the diamond, but the, the Cubs have, you know, have a multitude of guys, whether it's yeah. Baez or Bryant or Zobrist or, or now Contreras, who can play a variety of different places. I, I think that Joe Madden likes to uh, kind of show off a little bit here. I, I think it's is 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 Bryant really an accomplished right fielder or is he a better at third base. I mean are you we, you mentioned it in the first game here. Are you weakening your defense right. with all this versatility. Well in this case he moved Bryant to right so he could get Contreras into the lineup because Ross had to catch Lester and they wanted to squeeze Condelario right in third base. It, it, it's a luxury. Debut. It certainly is a luxury for a manager. Gives you a lot of you know a lot of interesting alignments and I guess helps keep everybody happy. Condelario got overwhelmed his first at bat on a three pitch strikeout and he's down to the count 0 and 2 again. There's that high fastball again. O2 to Condelario and he goes oh, down, down swinging. Five strikeouts for Syndergaard. He's now retired eight in a row. Armed with a big lead, Noah's taken command.
Zobra certainly embodies that as he did for Joe Madden when he played for Joe in Tampa Bay. I think it's just becoming increasingly uh, important for a lot of teams to have guys that move around moving pieces and guys that can do multiple things when you have injuries and you have uh, uh, different matchups that you want to have. Um, you know we got a lot of guys got a lot of good athletes here that can play multiple positions so um, you know it just gives uh, Joe the flexibility with the roster uh, flexibility with the, the lineup but uh, later in the game when when uh, you know you got to make switches here and there, you know it's nice to know that we have multiple guys that can do different things, and and I think the mindset overall, um, you know, on our team is is one of a flexible mindset, and uh, whatever we have to do to help the team win, guys are willing to do it, and and when you have that kind of mindset across the team, it helps, and I, I think there's more teams across the league that are um, you know kind of understanding that now. Wilmer Flores picks up his third hit of the day. He's now three for three. So. Let me ask you from a player's perspective. Do you think that if you are a team that aspires to play in the postseason, which obviously the Cubs do, that you need when you get down the stretch of the season and into the postseason that you need to have a set lineup? Or do you think that that flexibility remains an asset when you get to October? By a set lineup, you mean I guys mean, set in their positions, yeah, well, not moving them around the so much? Guys every day, as opposed to moving guys around and changing your lineup every day. Well, I don't think that when you get in the playoffs, you're going to go with your starting eight. But and who's their well, starting eight? The starting eight's going to be Russell. I think, was it Russell or Baez? I think it's probably going to be Russell. Um, Brian at third. Brian at third, absolutely. And what's lost here is all this talk about the versatility it just means that the Cubs have a strong bench if you have a weak bench you don't you can't do those things so the Cubs have a good solid bench on, on their on their hands and when they go into playoffs they're going to have guys that he can call on late if they're behind Loney takes one the other way just over the glove of Condelario and the Mets with back to back hits to start the fourth. So now every Met regular has a base hit today. Well, it's a hit parade. 12 hits, the Metsies. Oh, it tipped his glove. He just missed it. Got the thumb of his glove. But, I mean, just for argument's sake, right? So the, the Cubs get Dexter Fowler back from the disabled list. And now uh, you've got Bryant playing third base. So does Javier Baez not start in the postseason? Yes. Doesn't start. You can't take Zobrist out. You could put him at shortstop. Depends who's hot. That's the only interchangeable part that I see in this lineup. Uh, this Cub team is the shortstop because Russell's hitting around 230. He's not hitting, and Baez, they say, is a fabulous shortstop. You're not losing anything defensively. If Baez has got the hot hand, you can start Baez. Don't you agree? You can disagree, Gary. I, I don't know. That's it out to right field off the bat of Reynolds. Back at the track goes Bryant to reel it in. Flores tags at second and goes to third. Bryant makes a nice play going away to take another extra base hit away from Reynolds, who doubled out that direction earlier in the game. But still, he's getting there. He's not. That's really not a bad play, to say the truth. He's a good athlete. I thought maybe he misjudged a bit, but. I just don't. I think defense is important, and you got guys out of position. And these guys, Cubs got some people hurt. You made the good point, Gary, about you know Fowler out. They've lost Schwarber, but Schwarber was not so handy with the glove. Soler is out. He's, right. He's, so, so if Schwarber had been healthy, their outfield would have been set: Schwarber, Fowler, Hayward. But now they've got a lot of different parts. That's taken oh. the other way by Rivera for a base hit and that'll bring in a run. Flores scores. Loney pulls in at second. Third RBI of the day for Rene Rivera. And the Mets expand their lead to nine to one. Boy oh boy. Another first ball fastball. Ball away. Oh right down the pipe. Inner half. Well done. This is turning into a stampede. Now Syndergaard will bat with two on. You make an excellent point because if you remember last October, um, how exposed Schwarber was right. in left field. Yep. And maybe that changes Madden's mindset in terms of who he plays when he gets to the postseason. Maybe plays a more defensive-oriented team. He has that option, or he can go with the big bats and. Take Schwarber out for defense. 
course late for was not going to play this year. Anyway. Correct. So. I mean it just seems to me that the Met, uh, Mets the Cubs. Have a wealth of depth and to me if they're healthy. You can make a trade yep. and, and better your club with these guys. People are going to want these Cub players. Syndergaard flies one out to left and Contreras is there. And that's the second out. Well there's been a lot of talk about the Cubs acquiring another starting pitcher. They certainly need help in the bullpen. There's every chance they're going to make a big move for a reliever. But you know the Cubs have gone with the same five starters every game this year. And they've run into some trouble here in this series, but for the most part, their starting pitching has been outstanding. They're going to slide in a sixth starter this coming week. Adam Warren, who was in their bullpen earlier this year, is going to make a start. But they have very little depth at that position, and I wonder whether, you know, they've got some older starters in their rotation, like Lester and Arietta. Do they go out and get a starter to give them a little insurance? Of course, Lackey is 37, and Hamill's 33, and Lester's 32 and Marietta's 33. I mean, they've got older starters in that rotation. So I wonder whether they'll make a deal to try and shore that up. And of course, they've, they've got the excess position players to be able to do that, to trade major league level players. And um, there's been a lot of talk recently about whether they'd be willing to trade Schwarber, who's out for the year, to get a big time reliever. And the Cubs have said, absolutely not. We see him as a big power guy. In the years to come, Lagares tops one foul, one and two. But you know you're looking at you got you got you got Hayward. You no one's going to take Hayward's contract. He's 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 a cub. He's going nowhere. Right. Uh, they're not trading Bryant. You got the other guy. They're not trading Rizzo. But the guys like uh, Fowler, Soler, Baez. You know those are people that you can you've got an overload of outfielders you can move them and, and, and get someone of quality and I think it's the, you said it Gary it's their bullpen. It's my understanding that there's only three guys down in that bullpen that Joe Madden has absolute confidence in. And the other ones he kind of had mixes and stroke. Rondon stroke and maybe uh, Grimm. Also he's struggled too. So. They need help. They've only got one left hander in the pen, too, in Wood, Travis Wood. Grounded to the right side, and Zobrist in front of it. Throws out Lagares to end the inning, but the Mets tack on a run on Rene Rivera's third RBI of the day. We go to the fifth, 9 to 1, New York. Find you to test drive a new Ford, you'll discover why Ford is the total package. Well, Noah Syndergaard got himself a big lead after the Cubs had a brief one nothing lead. The Mets scored one in the first and seven in the second. Mm. And Syndergaard's been cruising since. You know, everybody when they 
talk about Syndergaard the first thing they look at is the velocity because he does throw harder than any starter in the game today. But what fascinates me about Syndergaard is the way the velocity works with his control. Thirty nine starts into his career his career numbers coming into the day forty six walks two hundred and eighty one strikeouts. No pitcher in the history of the game has had that few walks and that many strikeouts at this stage of their career. Well that's pretty amazing and he's a, he's a way ahead of the game here. This is something that you just doesn't come around every day. How about this. The last time that Noah walked a batter at City Field was May 1st. May 1st. That's more than two months ago. Well, how, okay. How many starts? 35 and two thirds innings. Okay. At home That's since he walked a batter. It's amazing. He's going to have a Stratomatic car with no walks on it. He's walked. He's struck out 46 batters at home since his last walk. How about that? That's grounded to shortstop. Reynolds picks it and throws out Baez one away. That's nine in a row retired by Syndergaard. He's also pitched to a low pitch count this afternoon. Interesting going into the game on his splits, Gary. His left-right splits. He hit a little bump there, uh, but. 202 right handers. 288 left handers. That's a bit of a surprise. Well, two of the three hits against him today are by left hand hitters, Hayward and Rizzo. That it would be that high up, 288. There's David Ross who struck out his first time up. And the pitcher, Spencer yep. Patton, is out on deck. It's the second time that uh, Joe Madden has punted. Patton has already thrown 53 pitches in relief today, which is a new career high for him. That's lined the other way, but just foul. Oh, nice effort. Tough chance off the wall. I'm just glad Brendan kept his feet. <laughs> Let's see him take a header. That would be. Don't, don't get your dauber down. Just keep working hard. You only had girls, right? You haven't had. Sons. No, I've so only had never. Girls. Have you ever coached a youth league? No, team? no. At any time? No. I. I just. I'd love to see you with the, with the youngsters, because you're so encouraging when you're up here. Uh, you would probably would not want to see me interact with the parents. <laughs> I think you'd have the gravitas to tell the parents to go home. <laughs> or let you do your or job. calm down. Yeah. We know what I tell the parents. I say I would call them in the beginning. I say we're here to win, and we're going to win fair and square. We're not going to have everybody's going to play. You're going to have to get used to it. Your son Johnny's not that good. I'll get him in when I can, but if it's a close game, he's on the pine. Sounds to me like um, you need to be coaching travel ball <laughs> and not wreck ball. Francis <laughs> that's the catch for the second half. <laughs> You know, if little Johnny doesn't play at all, it's going to be home playing video games soon. Well, he'll get him in. There's Patton getting his second big league at bat. I, I, I you know, we, we were talking the other day about a reality show. That would be a great reality show. What, me managing a you, team, a little league team? You coaching a, a, a youth league team. That could be that could be gold. Gold key. Gold, that's right. That'd be the Spanish version of Walter Matthau. <laughs> I don't think you're gonna I tell you what, I would make the workouts fun. I don't think you're climbing a tree to talk Ahmed down. <laughs> <laughs> well do not that. in my physical condition, <laughs> no. Since I need a probably a knee surgery and a hip replacement. No, I don't. I can't see myself climbing a tree. <laughs> it's 
to, to the pad. But I would make the workouts fun. None of the drills for the kids. All those kids, I mean, I probably had ADD when I was a kid. I was at ants in my pants. But when you get them all playing inner squad games and you teach as they're playing, it's make it fun. Kids don't want to do drills. It's ridiculous. Six strikeouts for Syndergaard. We have to work on this. I think this is a project for us to pursue. Hey, we're halfway through on a Sunday afternoon at City Field. Mets cruising nine to one. Look at the youth leaguers. Why on Twitter during this fifth inning for details on how to enter the SNY fifth inning sweepstakes presented by Tri State Ford. Here's your fourth fifth inning recap. Seven runs second inning that featured home runs by Wilmer Flores and Rene Rivera. Mets knocked John Lester out after an inning and a third. Noah Syndergaard has done the rest. Curtis Granderson's had a nice return to the lineup after missing four games. Home run, RBI single, walk in his first three plate appearances. As in Spencer Patton, who has already worked two and two thirds in relief of Lester. Lester was charged with eight runs and nine hits over an inning and a third, the shortest outing of his major league career. That covers 301 big league starts for Lester. Mm. And Granderson goes down swinging, so he's retired for the first time today. Second strikeout for Patton. <laughs> Well, tomorrow afternoon, the Mets open a three game series against the Marlins on the 4th of July. Coverage begins at 3 30 tomorrow. Matt Harvey will be on the mound for New York. And for more on the Marlins, let's check in with Steve Gelbs, whose report today is brought to you by Subway. Steve? You know, Gary, you look at the Marlins lineup and the numbers kind of jump off the page. Five players in the top 15 in the NL in batting average. The team is second overall in batting average in the NL behind Colorado, first in terms of road batting average. But it hasn't necessarily translated all the time this season to runs scored, 11th in the NL and runs scored this year. And that's because the Marlins are having major, major issues hitting with runners on base. They've left more men on base than anybody in the major leagues. And this road trip is really highlighting it. Just one and four on the road trip so far in five games. They've left 58 men on base. Now the starting pitching has not been good either. But it just goes to show you how badly the Marlins are struggling when they do have a high batting average even on this road trip hitting 307. Of course, one way to drive in runners is with home runs, and their, you know, their best home run hitter, John Carlos Stanton, has just had a dreadful season. And 
Justin Moore, who's their other big bopper, left yesterday's game with a sprained ankle, and that doesn't help them either. But the batting averages have just been stunning so far. They've got, although they've got as good of everyday players as most anybody in the National League. Uh, not most anybody. That doesn't make sense. They've got a real talented group out there that plays every day. What's amazing to me about the Marlins is that they've done as well as they have. Assessments take strike three call. They've done as well as they have without D. Gordon, who's out on suspension right. for another uh, four weeks, and with Stanton having a terrible year. They're your city probables. But look at the starting pitching. This is why they haven't been I better. Know. I said in spring, I don't like their pitching. Other than Jose Fernandez, who and he got beat up last night by by the Braves, uh, their starting pitching has just not been good at all. Now they shored up their bullpen by bringing in Fernando Rodney, so that's a little better area. But getting to the end of that bullpen, that could be a problem. Neil Walker goes after a first pitch breaking ball. Well, the Marlins are in Fort Bragg, North Carolina, tonight to finish off their series with the Braves, a one-off. There in a makeshift stadium, but on this road trip, look at their ERA 7.16. Yeah, that, that that'll be one and four. Mm -hmm. I'm very curious to see Stanton, see what the heck's wrong with him, because Barry Bonds, the hitting coach, now it's his first year back in uniform, and uh, Ozuna has responded to his tutelage. It's having a nice year. Punch the other way. Tough play for Condelario with the bare hand, and Walker beats it out. Condelario came with a reputation of an outstanding defensive player, and he did all he could with that, but Walker able to beat it down the line for his second hit of the day. Very nice play, but he's out of position as far as the shift was concerned, and way, way in the hole, and that's a tough chance. Nice. Ball had a lot of spin on it. A lot of English. So a two out base runner for Wilmer Flores, who's three for three today. And the slider off the plate. Look at that side. It's the sidewinder. Oh, he got a good grip on it, didn't he? Perfect. Wasn't there a pitcher called Three Fingered something? Or? Three Finger Brown. Yeah. Mordecai Three Finger Brown. His name came up the other night in the uh, trivia question. There was a guy in the 50s, 60s called with well, the Pirates, Vinegar something. Vinegar Ben Mizell. Yes. Pitched for the Mets at the end of his D career. Did he? He did. Wilmer. In fact, he was Wilmer. He was the original Wilmer. Okay. Vinegar Ben Mizell. And now the latter day Wilmer. Who was 0 for 14 when the day began and 3 for 3 today, including a home run that led off the second inning and put the Mets in front in this game. Wilmer, that swing got him talking to himself. He was angry at himself for not staying in on that breaking ball. Two two coming and he hits this one in the air to deep left field back goes Contreras to the warning track back at the wall it's out of here. Wilmer Flores with his second home run and his fourth hit of the day. A two run shot for Wilmer and it's 11 to 1 New York. Wow. We talk about breaking out of a slump in a big way. Four for four two home runs four RBIs for Flores. Well, Wilmer is, uh, if he can keep this up, is making a statement for, hey, keep me at third base. Well, we mentioned at the outset today that he might be looking over his shoulder at Jose Reyes's progress through the minor leagues. This kind of performance will keep you bat in the lineup. Good for Wilmer. A lot of fly balls getting carry, Gare. Only the second four hit game of Flores' career. And I agree with you, the ball is carrying. And uh, we talked about the home run numbers. Steve had a report on it the other night that June was the uh, greatest home run hitting month ever. 
makes you really suspect that maybe there's something going on with the baseball, but certainly the ball is carrying in a way this year that uh, we are not accustomed to seeing. So what do they do when they issue when they make the new baseball? Do they 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 string it together a little more they tighter? I guess to I get more. I, I mean that could be by design. It could be inadvertent. I don't know, or it could just be, uh, be not true at all. Ronnie Banks wants this foot of foul ball. I remember Ronnie saying when the ball in the uh, in the steroid era. When all the home runs were there, and Ronnie noticed a distinct difference in the baseball that it was not as soft to the grip. He said you used to be able to you know, be, be a little more supple. You can you can move your fingers around. Right. The bar's hard, ball's hard as hard as a rock. I remember him telling me that the turn of the century. Well, that's when they uh, put in the humidor in Colorado. It was to you know add suppleness to the balls and. Have to not be as rock hard, but who knows? I just we do know this: home runs are way up this year. So is run scoring in an era that was tending toward pitchers, where pitchers are throwing harder than ever. And now, uh, when when contact is made, the ball is flying. So you can think what you want, yep. but that's the reality. And you know how you can also notice. We've seen it a lot this year where outfielders, experienced outfielders, move to a spot where they expect the ball to go and then they have to backpedal a few extra feet. Yep. Just gives you an idea that the ball has a little extra carry on. Three two to Loney. And the curveball sits high for ball four. And Loney is on base for the third time. Third walk given up by Patton in relief. You have to wonder whether he's hitting a wall. He had never thrown more than 37 pitches in a big league game, and he's at 75 now. The Cubs have the bullpen up behind him. Of course, with no day off tomorrow, the uh, you know, the Cubs would like to use as little bullpen as possible in an 11 to 1 game. Joel Peralta, who uh, had a rough go of it in the first game of the series, is up. Reynolds is one for three and he takes a breaking ball strike. Reynolds doubled to right field in the second almost had another one his last time up in the fourth but Bryant made a nice catch retreating on the warning track. So the Mets have the Marlins for three starting tomorrow. And then they have the Nationals for four beginning on Thursday. The Nationals today activated Steven Strasburg off the disabled list. And Strasburg is pitching this afternoon against Cincinnati. They have a 5 0 lead in the fifth. And instead of sending Lucas Giolito back to AAA, they kept Giolito around and they put Joe Ross on the disabled list. So the Mets. Will probably face both Giolito and Strasburg in the series here in New York. Well, that'll be a barn burner right before the break. And I'm looking forward to that one. That's a big, uh, it's a four game set. Yeah, remember Giolito made his big league debut against the Mets and gave up just one hit in four innings before uh, the rains came in Washington. So it's the Marlins the next three days, then four with the Nats, and then after the All-Star break, the Mets go to Philadelphia. Philadelphia, Chicago, Miami. On that road trip. Two two to Reynolds. And he bounces one to the left side. Baez on the backhand makes the long throw on target. And that retires the side, but the Mets. With their fourth home run of the day, the second one from this man, Wilmer Flores, with his fifth of the year. Huge afternoon for Flores and the Mets. They lead 11 1 after five.
All right, Gary, here we go to the sixth inning, and Addison Russell will bat for Ben Zobrist. Second time in the series that uh, Joe Madden has done this, taking Zobrist, who's 35 years old, out with the Cubs down big in the middle of the game. So Russell, the regular shortstop, was getting a day off today. Pinch hitting here, hitting just 230 for the year. And he mm. hits one up the middle for a base hit. That snaps a string of 11 in a row, retired by Syndergaard. The fourth hit for the Cubs today. He didn't wait around, did he? He's got a fastball, ripped it up the middle. So now Jason Hayward, who's one for two, he scored the only Cubs run after doubling in the first, popped up in the third. And Loney playing behind Russell at first with an 11 to 1 lead. So I'm looking at uh, the compression sleeves that they gave out today here. Great giveaway item. It became a signature for Cespedes last year. In Washington today, the giveaway item is a Herbert Hoover bobblehead doll. That's the new president and the president uh, races. It is. They got rid of who did they get rid of? They didn't get rid of anybody. They, they added. Added. Last year they added William Howard Taft, and now they added Herbert Hoover. It's interesting that they ever added Hoover. Right. I would have added James K. Polk. Why? One of our great presidents. How Manifest about, Destiny. How about John Adams? It could very well be there. I mean, I think I mean, they got it covered, though. I mean, I mean John, the, the Sedition Act, that was not good. John was a bit of a curmudgeon, but I think he'd make a great running president. Nice backhand play by Reynolds, gets the out at second. <laughs> nice play by Reynolds, beautiful backhand. I mean, what presidents could you add that? I don't think anybody in the industrial age of America and the, that run of Republicans that were there after when Lincoln. I don't think anybody you could have Grant. Albert Elmore is going to bat for Chris Bryant, so Bryant will get the rest of the day off. You have Grant. I mean, I mean, Grant was a very, very historic figure. I mean, they could have added FDR, but I don't know how they. Feel about his right. you know, running ability. Dumped into left field, a base hit for Almora. So two hits in the inning. So the two pinch hitters of both. Isn't that interesting, huh? Two pinch hitters. Syndergaard coming into this inning at a two hitter. They could add Calvin Coolidge, but he wouldn't say much. Silent Cal with the war bonnet. Have Truman. Truman. Truman would be a good one. Harry Harry would be an excellent running president. Yes. I think they would have gone for him over here. Here's Rizzo who drove in the Cubs run with a first inning single. Syndergaard starts him off with the slider. I mean Yes, I'm all ears. Just thinking about the Americans with Disability Act, and maybe it would be a great idea to get FDR out there, you know, as he was in a wheelchair. Just, I don't think so. You, know, you think that would no, be No, I'm not. No. It would be a youthful FDR. Okay. Bigger. Or as Kennedy used to say, Vigor. Or maybe JFK. They need to add him. Sounds so, sounds like an it's an 11 to 1 game. Yes, it does. Mm. That smacked to center by Rizzo. Ligaris reaches out to make the grab. Ball hung up just long enough for Juan to stick out that glove and make the play. Two down. Cubs taking their rips. Let's take a look at the. Velocity on Syndergaard right now because they're kind of hitting the ball, hitting the fastball. 
And you know what? It's probably Syndergaard here. I got a 10 run lead. 69 pitches. Certainly has kept his pitch count down today. He struck out six. Now we'll face Wilson Contreras with two out and two on. He's had the big lead since he took them out in the third. Contreras hit the ball hard his last time up, but right at Walker, who made the catch for the out. And Syndergaard goes after him with a slider. Nothing and one. Hayward at second, Almora at first with two out. And Contreras mm. can't catch up with that fastball, and it's 0 2. We'll do the two seamer here by Sundergaard. Near 97. Mm. O2 coming. Up and in at 99. No velocity issue there. Remember, it was two starts back against Kansas City in his last inning, the sixth, when the velocity began to drop for Noah when that elbow started barking. There's certainly been no sign of that either in his last start, as ill fated as it was against the Nats, or here today. 1 2. And he buries that slider in the dirt. 2 and 2. Well, one thing's for certain here, and I think we talked about it here, I think when we were in Washington, is that this is the first time for Syndergaard that he's had a little discomfort and dealing with it and naturally have a fear that oh, my career relies on my arm and I've got this bone spur. I never had it, and the unknown, the fear of the unknown. But I think he's moved past it now. He's thrown, he's thrown great. And he strikes out Contreras to end the inning. So a couple of hard hit balls against Noah in that inning, but he responds with his seventh strikeout and strands a pair. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Mets with a big lead. To get the city line score that scored seven in the second inning to build a big lead and Noah Syndergaard has made that stand up lots of changes for the Cubs Javier Baez moves from shortstop to second Addison Russell who pinch hit stays in it short Matt Caesar will play left field 
Albert Almora who pinch hit stays in in center and Jason Hayward moves from center to right and the new pitcher for the Cubs is Joel Peralta. Rene Rivera's had a big day a homer a single three RBIs. And Rivera takes outside for ball one. There is Peralta making his second appearance of the series. Yeah he gave up that uh, came in after Lackey left when Lackey lost his control with a 3 1 lead didn't get anybody out. Gave up a base hit and a walk was charged two runs. It was the Mets three run seventh inning on Thursday. Remember they were down three nothing in that game coming off the sweep in Washington. They're down late. Cespedes at the upper deck home run to finally get them on the board. And then that three run seventh was such a huge inning for them. Nimmo had the big hit against Peralta. Yes. And then Baez made the throwing error and the Mets were off to a lead and it seems like they've flipped a switch since then. And we also have one more change. Wilson Contreras is catching after he started the game in left field. So the only guys left where they started were our Rizzo at first and Condelario at third. Noah Syndergaard waits on deck then Juan Lagares for the Mets in the sixth and Rivera tops one foul. So Spencer Patton went three and two thirds in long relief. Gave up six hits and three runs. Walked three struck out three. After John Lester lasted just an inning and a third in the shortest start of his career. 40 year old Joel Peralta who pitched for Joe Madden in Tampa Bay. And the splitter and he went around for strike three. So Rivera is struck out for the first down of the home sixth. Syndergaard comes up Gare and he hit a bullet right at the left fielder his last at bat uh, second to last at bat Back. also walked and scored in the Mets big seven run second inning there were a few turning points in that inning for Lester and that was one of them a three two pitch to Syndergaard he took a half swing could have easily been strike three but they gave him a pass for ball four and the inning tumbled down for Lester who never retired another batter yeah he gave up five straight base hits after that that's drilled to right field but Hayward has it lined up no it's over his head Syndergaard digging for second and he slides in safely with a double almost stumbled off the bag but he stays on Hayward went back on that ball as though he was going to have a play but it just got over his head too quickly and Syndergaard might be a little shaken I, up after that slide it was a late slide in the second base. Just wondering. He's fine. He's a tough kid. He's got beautiful swing there. And there's another ball here that carried. It looked like Hayward thought he had it lined up. Russell kept the tag on him, but Syndergaard able to stay on the base. He fooled Syndergaard. Now he's got to put the afterburners on. A little downshift. Yeah, he's oh, he's fine. Syndergaard's fifth hit of the year and four of the five have been for extra bases. Now Lagares pops one to the shallow left. And Caesar comes in to get it. Two out. If you were keeping a scorecard, and I'm sure you are, uh, Matt Caesar is hitting in the eighth spot in the Cubs batting order. And the pitcher remains in the nine hole. Two out Syndergaard still at second now Granderson who has a single a home run on a walk today two for three he's driven in a pair.
in the dirt to Granderson. SNY Super Slow Motion brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealers. Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing. Oh, geez. Right off the forehead. Knock your cap right off. Granderson provided <laughs> the Mets' first run of the day with that home run in the first inning. Seven of his 14 home runs have now come in the first innings of games. Curtis sitting in the two hole for the first time this season. One and two to Curtis. I mean, the plan has been that when Jose Reyes is ready, that he gets called up and he goes into that leadoff spot. You wonder, though, as well as the Mets have played the last few days and as well as Nimmo has played and looked good in that leadoff spot, could that change their plans at all? Who goes down? Reynolds or Flores? That's that's of interest. I don't know. Really. I mean, when Reynolds slip up Mets box score, Flores having a huge day today. Two homers, four for four, four RBIs. And Jose can play shortstop, but they say his range is is uh, compromised now in his latter years. Uh, do the Mets feel defensively? It's enough. No. Uh, but do they need Reynolds out there? Because Cabrera is, you know, going to need some rest. Granderson strikes out to end the inning. I guess we'll find out in the coming days. Let's have some decisions to make. But things going right in this series. Mets bidding for a four game sweep and well on their way. Syndergaard with some thunder to match his lightning. This year, the Mets are honoring the 1986 squad. It's the 30th anniversary, so the Mets are wearing those 1986 style uniforms for every Sunday home game, complete with racing stripe. And uh, that brings us to back to tips with Keith, who of course wore that 1986 uniform so brilliantly and with such style. So, do you have any particular tips for the? Uh, the latter day Mets wearing the 86 style uniform. I think that they probably these uniforms were all polyesters and they were made to be worn tight. And remember Lee Mazzelli was painted into his pants. You recall the old days there. Uh, what I don't really care for. I never like that one collar band the, the blue collar band the little V neck. And also the. Uh, J.M.R. Condelario picks up his first major league hit. He had struck out on three pitches each of his first two at bats and Condelario the 22 year old just called up today 
now has his first major league hit. Congratulations here and it's good smart hitting because you got a pitcher that's got a 10 run lead in the seventh and probably going to get more fastball so just get on it get that heater to get a base hit. There's the neckline I don't like and also look at the shoulder patch Gary it's just uh, the you mentioned that it was a year off on the on the uh, Syndergaard's left uh, bicep. The I thought it was too. a little large kind of like those. Uh, it's like those new polo shirts. Remember the little small polo logo. Now they got the big large ones. It's, oh, very ostentatious. <laughs> well, you know the Mets blue uniforms have the big Mr. Met logo on the sleeve. Yes. Javier Baez is one for two today. Popped it up into shallow right. Long run for Walker or Granderson and it falls. Bobbled by Granderson but no further advance as Candelario stops at second. So a pop fly single for Baez his second hit of the day. Well Texas Leaguer classic Texas Leaguer all three guys coming in and it can't finds a hole. Seventh hit. Off Syndergaard. So two aboard now. Matt Caesar will bat for the first time. Okay, now yeah. let's go to the socks. Yes, because that's very the important. Socks are the big, especially with the racing stripe. You want to make sure the socks are perfect. Well, see how the well, see how Syndergaard's lines on his side are off. That's a no-no. That's a fashion no-no. You've got to line up this the shirt. With your pant, your shirt stripe, with your pants stripe, that that's a must. That, that's yeah, that's bad fashion. Now, do you think though that a pitcher <laughs> over the course of the game will have those <laughs> stripes altered in terms of their proximity? Nice. By Walker and a beautifully executed double play, with Baez bearing right down on him. Walker stood his ground in turn two. Five four three for the first two outs of the inning. Well this has been the upgrade nice play by Wilmer staying in front perfect feed look at Walker does a little splits there gets the guy to slide between his legs. No foul no perfect double play Taylor made. It's a clean slide. Beautiful. Turn there. So two on the runner at third. And now the pitcher Peralta will take a turn at bat so for the third time in this series. Joe Madden is going to have a relief pitcher bat to squeeze an extra inning out of him. Waltz is one for six in his major league career. His one hit was a double. Antonio Bastardo, first man up in the Mets bullpen. Syndergaard only had 81 pitches. Remember, he only threw 71 his last start. And mm. Peralta trying his best, but it's one and two. Now Syndergaard painting the corners with that fastball. Stop by your local Sherwin Williams store for all of your painting needs. Peralta makes contact and fouls it off. Peralta's one hit, by the way, came nine years ago. But having watched Matt Albers earlier this year, we know that anything is possible. <laughs> One, two. And he went around for strike three. And that ends the inning. Eight strikeouts for Syndergaard through seven innings. He has made the most of his big cushion today. Stretch time, 11 to 1 New York.
Two outs to go to a perfect game. Jim Qualls, a rookie outfielder, is up. A clean hit to left center field. And there goes the perfect game. But there's a standing ovation for Seaver by 59,000 fans. You know, that was a huge game in July as the Mets made the way toward their first pennant and eventually winning the World Series. So when Seaver finished that game after he gave up the hit to Jimmy Qualls, you would have figured that he would have been celebrating on the mound. He looked so unhappy when that game was over because he had not finished off the perfect game. Well, perfect game, how often do they come by? Yes. He, well, he eventually got his no hitter against you guys. I, yes, he did. I went, uh, hit the ball hard twice off him. Okay. Joe Morgan made a play in the hole between first and second. And also he made one up the middle on me on a ground ball, two ground balls. Tom had nothing that day. We laughed at it. He was throwing all junk. Well, Peralta getting set to throw his second inning. Mets will go to their bench now, get Cespedes and Walker out of there. Brandon Nimmo will come up to pinch hit. Nimmo has made such a splash in his first week in the big leagues. Had his first big league RBI. In the opening game of the series, then his first big league home run the next night. Last night he hit lead off, drew a lead off walk in front of Walker's two run homer in the first, had a hit later in the game. Here's the reaction. This I, I love this. Cleon catches the last out and Seaver just he's just beside himself. Gordy says, Hey, we just won a big game. And Seaver, he's not buying any of it. Just not happy at all. <laughs> Close but no cigar. So Nimmo pinch hitting for Cespedes. And he takes a rip. Cespedes was two for four today. Drove in a run. Nimmo a week into his big league career hitting 286. And Nimmo got that big base hit you mentioned earlier, Gary, in that first game of the series. It was against Peralta, whom he's facing again. Hard hit ball up the middle. Drove in a run. The first run on the first of the three runs. And scored the and third run. Hit by the pitch. So Peralta comes in with the fastball. Nimmo didn't make much of an effort to get out of the way. And he's aboard to lead off in the home seven. I don't like. I want to see him swing the bat. It's 11 to 1. If it's a one run go close game, take it for the team. Now Kelly Johnson will bat for Neil Walker. Walker was two for four today and drove in a run. So Joe Madden pulled some of his regulars with the Mets well in front. And now Terry Collins doing the same. More so on a day game, you will see the managers when there's a blowouts do it quicker, get their regulars out. Wilmer Flores is on deck. He'll stay in because he has a chance for a five hit game. Johnson hits one deep to left field. That goes Caesar to the track. Looking up. It's out of here. Are you kidding me? Kelly Johnson with a pinch hit two run homer. And for the second time in this series, the Mets have hit five home runs. They had never done that at City Field. They've now done it twice in this series against the Cubs. And it's 13 to 1 New York. I did not think he hit that ball that good, Gary. Well, the ball, uh, it's flying. For whatever reason, it's flying. It is flying. Fourth home run of the year for Kelly Johnson. And now Flores is four for four and has two home runs today. And he takes a strike. Let's see the contact here, where it was on the bat. Well. That's getting close to the end. And Flores takes up and in. So after Wilmer has hit two home runs and done four for four, he gets a little chin music. Well, that was not any chin music.
doing one to Flores. Who's going to eat up innings for the Cubbies? Bullpen. We've already got Patton eating them up. I think Peralta here is going to have to chew some innings up. Well, it's only this one and one more for the Cubs today. Two and two to Flores. Last five hit game for the Mets was Yuanis Cespedes. It was last August in Colorado. Looking for the first five hit game of his career. And he lines one in the left field and he's got it. Five for five for Walter Flores. How about that? All high fastballs, one breaking ball he hit. Really a good. Congratulations, Walmart. Those don't come by too often. Well done. Who knows? Maybe if the Mets keep hitting, he might get a chance for six. Only been one six hit game in Mets history. It was Edgardo Alfonso at the Astrodome. What a day that was for Edgardo, obviously. Hit three home runs in his six for six game. And they're chanting Wilmer Flores' name, just like last year. Well, Met fans are happy bunch. Five for five, two home runs, four runs batted in, three runs scored. Huge day for Wilmer Flores. A little barbecue after the game. Food will go down nice. Everybody will be happy. Don't forget, by the way, tomorrow is a four o'clock game. On some of the schedules, it was originally listed as a one o'clock game, but it's four o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So don't be early and thanks don't be I late. DVR'd for one o'clock. I'll change it when I get home. That's right. You're not here tomorrow, are you? So you have barbecue on your mind, don't you? <laughs> Loney drills one foul. Looks like Loney is starting to look in a little bit and really put swing that bat with authority. Well, he's hit four home runs already, which is as many as he hit all of last year. And remember, Kevin Long is the hitting coach here, and he came from the Yankees where they teach their hitters how to pull with that short right field porch. Well, he certainly made an impact on Daniel Murphy. Absolutely. Flores at first, nobody out in the inning. And Loney pops that one down the left field line foul. And it'll go out of play. The uh, the Mets have matched their season high with 13 runs. They scored 13 against the Giants on April 29th. That's the day they set the club record with a 12 run inning. And Wilmer Flores today started the day batting 224. He's raised his average 26 points. Good. It's up to 250. That's hard to do halfway through the season. Of course, he hasn't been playing every day all season. Under 48 at bats now. That's a got some great swings in this series. They have roughed, roughed up a pitching staff that came in here number one in ERA in the National League, and they have put the blowtorch to them. 31 runs and 54 hits in this four game series for the Mets against the Cubs. Who had the best record in baseball when they arrived and the best pitching staff in baseball. And he pops this one up. That'll go out of play foul. Drive around the majors presented by Cadillac. Steven Strasburg is working on a no hitter. He had 93 pitches through six. First game off the disabled list, so you have to think it's unlikely he can go nine, but nonetheless, having himself a fine time. Phillies out in front of the Royals and the uh, Braves and Marlins play tonight at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, where they built a stadium that holds about 12,000. 
for that special game tonight. Seventh pitch of the bat coming to Loney. And misses low. So the Mets have hit five home runs at home today. It's the sixth time in their history they've hit five home runs in a home game. They did it twice at the Polo Grounds in 1962. They did it twice at Shea, once in 85 and once in 2000. And they've now done it twice in this series at City Field. Crazy, right? Yes. Who hit the home runs in 85, Dave? Get on it. Let's go. Don't, don't, don't throw them. up your hands. <laughs> just check if Keith was. So that's part what we of pay it. you for. He really doesn't care about the rest of it. He just wants to know if he was part of it. We, we pay you. We get paid for this sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> if it was Foster, if it was, you know, if it was Carter, Strawberry, he doesn't really care. Just see if Keith's on the list. Mookie could have hit one, you know. Oh, that's a long at bat here. They always say don't give away at bats. Dave is scribbling furiously, in it, which means only one thing. We won't be able to read it when he passes us the note. I want the score of the game, and I want to know what I did in the game. Two. You were not on the list, sorry. Oh, so Daryl hit two. Hojo heap and hurdle hurdle. Wow. We had our we had our uh, two of our uh, backups in three of our backups in there. Wow. That's ten pitches and counting to Loney in this at bat. You did have a contribution in that game though. Two for four two RBIs two lazy hits. <laughs> Come on, he, he made that up. An 11 to 4 win. I got lazy hits. Oh, 16 to 4. That's your yeah, handwriting. That's his handwriting. We killed him. You. Killed him. Who who we play that day? Loney Atlanta. pulls that one toward the hole. Nice stop by Rizzo. He's going to go to second and get a force there. And that's the first down of the inning. Nice play by Rizzo. You thought he might go to first base. Had the presence of mind to know he still can get the lead runner. This is a, a sure 13, 13 to 1 blow, blowout. I'm not sure he had to play at first case because I don't think we're all to get off the mound. Okay. Can he can he tell that? No, not from there. Nope. So you no, know, it's always good. You want to keep the uh, runners off base for your pitchers. They're earned their earned run averages. Nice play. On the way in that game in 85 when the Mets hit five home runs and Daryl hit two home runs. He had seven RBIs in that game. Who pitched for him? Who was throwing the Walt lollipops up there? There's Matt Reynolds. And he takes ball one. Reynolds one for four, doubled and scored back in the second. You know who started that game was Bedrosian. And when they had Atlanta started Bedrosian, this is before they traded him to Philly. He would he one of the hardest throws I ever faced, Bedrosian. But when he started with Atlanta, Gary, the first four innings he threw bullets, and the fifth inning he gas out. And, and Philly had the presence of mind to make him a closer. And then he became a Cy Young. Award. Yes, he did. And he he was one of the hardest throwers I ever faced. He and Scott Gerelts were the two hardest throwers, and over in the American League, Thigpen, Thigpen threw bullets for the White Sox. Those guys throw harder than Ryan. A different kind of. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to describe, Garrett. Ryan threw hard, yes. But Ryan's was was upstairs a lot more effective. Bedrosian and um, Geralt's were the two right-handers I ever faced, and Seaver. That when they threw a knee-high strike, I thought it was rising. Only that's three guys. And Geralt's had that great split too. Oh, Geralt's threw hard. He had a very difficult motion to pick up. He's a goofy looking guy too with the glasses. 
Reynolds goes after the splitter and that's strike three. Third strikeout for Peralta second out of the inning. There the bottom drops out. Joe Madden heading to the mound. There's nobody up in the bullpen for the Cubs. He's saying, uh, I know. Oh, is he done? Oh, he's done. He's going to bring in. He's going to bring in an everyday player. Yes. I did. I did not see anybody throwing in the bullpen. So. So who's going to pitch? Who's got the baseball? Was that Mon? Is that Montero? I believe that might be. That would be his last. Miguel Montero, yep. who started the year as the regular catcher and is now the backup to Contreras, he is going to pitch. When's the last time you saw this? Normally, when they bring a position player in, it's it's to start an inning, but they're going to bring him in with two out in the seventh. And this is going to completely deplete the bench for Joe Madden. Well, now he doesn't have to pinch it for the pitcher. That's true. Because the pitcher is Montero. Right. This will be Montero's major league pitching debut. He's been in the big leagues for 11 years, but has never taken the mound. So, so the other day in Cincinnati, Matt used three different pitchers to play left field. Today, he'll use a catcher to pitch. That's just the other day. In uh, Toronto, in a 19 inning game, the Blue Jays used two position players to pitch, and the second one, Ryan Goins, who wound up the losing pitcher, wound up on the disabled list the next day with a strained forearm. Really? Yeah. Well, remember uh, Jose Canseco hurt his arm. Yeah, trying to pitch. I certainly do. So, you know, it's all fun and games until somebody gets hurt. So uh, Rene Rivera, a catcher, will get to face Miguel Montero, a catcher. Now, when you're a position player, when you're when you're a hitter in this situation against a position player, is there? I mean, I, you don't want to be struck out by no a guy it's who's pressure. Not really a pitcher, right? It's a, it's, it's a no-win situation for the hitter. I had once faced Tommy Hutton in St. Louis and um, two men on and he tried to drop a three two hook on me very lazy breaking ball and I deposited it into the right center field bleachers but I was relieved I didn't want to make an out. So. Uh, Montero has a chance to show off his wares on the mound. And Rivera fouls it off. He's just throwing a little 80 mile an hour sinker up there, isn't he? Interesting. Catcher usually throws over the top. He's throwing a little sink. Rubbing the ball up very professionally. He's been waiting a long time for this. 32 years old. Been a starter behind the plate most of his career, now relegated to a backup status. He's got an inherited runner on there, too. He's just running a little sink in there. He's getting the ground balls. A couple of. To the head and count. Pounded into the ground. Probably drop a little hook on him here. Throwing 79 to 81 with that sinking fastball. And now he's ahead in the count on Rivera. Here comes the curve. Uh, let's see what he's got. Oh, oh a radar when he hit him. Yeah, that's not quite the way he anticipated oh, that going. <laughs> Rivera with a big smile on his face. Out in front. And he hit him. <laughs> oh, got him on the Achilles tendon. Yeah. Yep. It's, I didn't pull the shade down. It's a little different in uh, in the real game, you know. Guys practice breaking balls all the time when they're warming up. Now he's got to face the left hand hitting Diaza. Diaza started last night, went one for two in a walk. Jacob Degrom had the uh, had the gear on to bat, but it's going to be Diaza, and that is in the spot of Syndergaard. So that finishes Noah's day at the office. Very nice one. It looks like he's going to collect his ninth win of the season. I think he needs to stay with that sinker. Yes, and keep it down and away.
And Montero gets the ground ball. And Baez throws out Deaza. And so Montero, in his big league pitching debut, gets it out. He might have to go another inning now. We go to the eighth, 13 to 1, New York. SNY special Lenny Dykstra all or nothing Wednesday at 6 p.m. only on SNY. And here's a clip from that show with Lenny sitting down with Ronnie. It was about winning, but it's about money. I was on a mission to get paid. That's right. See, money changes the way people think. And it makes people make decisions they wouldn't normally make. And and when when there's money on the line, they're asking me about cocaine, and this and that. No, no, steroids. Much more coming up Wednesday night. Hey, Antonio Bastardo in to pitch the eighth inning. Changes for the Mets. Kelly Johnson stays in at second base. Brandon Nimmo out in left field. Alejandro Diaz in right field. And Bastardo in behind Syndergaard, who had himself a terrific outing today. Addison Russell leading off in the eighth inning, one and one. There's Bastardo's numbers for the year, and it has been a bit of a disappointment. He's had a tough, tough run here this year. Command problems. His first appearance in this series, he actually pitched really well as last time out that last game in Washington, two hitless innings. And trying to build on that here today in a lopsided game. Russell up for the second time, pinch hit in the sixth, and then stayed in his shortstop, single to center field in his only at bat. Syndergaard threw only 83 pitches today in his seven innings of work. So in a year where the Mets are a little wary about some of the pitchers' workloads. Syndergaard threw 71 pitches his last start against the Nationals, just 83 today. His next start will be Friday against the Nationals. That's and that will put him in line to pitch in the All Star game a week from Tuesday. Yep. And then 83 over seven innings, that's outstanding. 84 is the official number. 84. Okay. So Syndergaard's ERA, which was fifth in the league coming in, was at 2.49. It goes down to 2.41. Hit toward the hole. Reynolds on the backhand. And the overhand throw gets Russell one away. Let's check in with the studio. Gary Apple has another game break brought to you by the New York State Smokers Quit Line. Mm -hmm. 
Espinosa with a grand slam in that game. So terrific return for the DL for Strasburg, whose next outing will be against the Mets. How many wins will that give him now? He's he was already double digits, wasn't he? I think it's, I think it's 11. Yeah. Here's Jason Hayward, and he takes the pitch high. Let he has see. 10, so this would be 11. Which is he's going to go to the All Star game. Arietta and Cueto each have 12 wins, Kershaw 11, and then Strasburg will have 11. Well, Noah's got nine. He's got two more starts, right, before the break? One. One more after he's this. Broken bat liner, and Johnson's got it for the second half. So you want to go into the All Star break with 10 wins? Well, with Kershaw out of the picture and with Arietta all of a sudden struggling, you'd have to say that Syndergaard and Johnny Cueto would be the favorites to start the All Star game. I mean, Terry's going to have that decision. I would always defer to the veteran over the younger player. Although we saw Matt Harvey start the All Star. I don't think Matt Harvey should have ever started that game. I may have been public about that. I've made a statement. It should have been Kershaw. Uh, Kershaw was miffed and he handled it great. Now Mora hits one off the end of the bat into center and he's two for two off the bench. First hit against Bastardo and the Cubs eighth of the day. But that's part of the grand show of baseball now. I mean Matt started that game because it was at City Field. And uh, Things have changed in a lot of PR areas in the game. Well, and he wore the orange shoes that day. That's that fine. Was part of the show. Right. Too. It used to be Willie White Shoes Johnson in the All Star games. I wore my white shoes. Only in the All Star. Game. Only in the All Star game. It was fun. I felt fast. <laughs> Here's Anthony Rizzo, who drove in the only Cub run. You know, the Cubs led this game at one point. Mm. And it's hit sharply right down at Looney, and he makes the play to retire the side. So the Starno gets through a scoreless eighth. Mets have themselves a field day as they prepare to sweep. For these two managers, continue. The uh, Cubs already have a position player on the mound, Miguel Montero, who got the final out in the seventh, and the Mets are about to pinch hit with a pitcher. After Juan Lagares leads off, Jacob DeGrom is on deck to pinch hit for Bastardo. Not the first time Jacob has pinch hit. Lagares one for five in his return to the lineup today. So far, Montero is the only pitcher who's taken the mound for the Cubs who has not given <laughs> up a run. So far. 
He did hit a batter in the last inning, but then got a ground out from Deaza and trying to complete the day for the Cubs on the mound. Lagares takes a big cut at the sinker, and it's two and one. Well, I mean it's 79 miles an hour, so it's I, like uh, a changeup. But it means it's very lazy. But it's at least it's moving. Can't be swinging and missing. Just call it. I won't say that on the air. Sorry. I would love to say what it is. Well, it's a baseball term. Not terrible. Toward the middle of the diamond, and Lagares has his second hit of the day. They all count, even when they come against you, non pitchers You got that right. So Juan, you get a pass here. I guarantee you breathe a sigh of relief. Hey, gosh, he, he didn't get me out. I got a base hit. Now a big ovation for DeGrom as he's announced as the pinch hitter. Jacob is a pinch hitter in his career, 0 for 2 with a walk, including 0 for 1 this year. The Mets over 30 years of their history before they ever had a pitcher get a pinch hit. Let's fly down the left field line and just foul. The first Met pitcher ever to get a pinch hit was David Cohn. He did it in Montreal in, really? in the early 90s. And David was not a good hitter. It also took over 30 years of Mets history before they ever had a position player take them out. That was Bill Pakoda in Pittsburgh in 1992. Hmm. A lot of losses in there, a lot of routes in Mets history early in there. Yeah, but in those days, you just gave the ball to a pitcher and he just he pitched six innings if he had to in relief. Yep. Nobody cared. Oh, the ground flies one out to left and Caesar. Backing up and makes the catch. Ball keeps carrying. Well, look at the flags, Gary. I didn't bother to look at the flags. Nice, and nice hand for the ground. Nice hand for the ground. Look, the flags up above the left field upper tier there are blowing towards Manhattan. Yep. So there's a little jet strain. Oh, Matt wow. says, well, you gave it a shot. If there'd yeah. been a lefty on the mound, Matt's probably would have gotten the chance to pinch it. Huh. Here's Nemo up for the second time. He was hit on the arm by a pitch in the seventh inning. Mets have 19 hits this afternoon, which matches their season high. And Nemo clouts one out to right center. But Hayward gets over. Good cut. Two out. Like what I'm seeing from the young man. Just got in a little bit. That's a good swing. I like that swing. He just got under it. You got to give all the credit to Montero right now. He's worked a full inning now and given up just one hit in his big league pitching debut. The catcher turned pitcher. The last time the Mets faced a position player on the mound, you got to go back to 2011 when Don Kelly pitched against the Mets as a Detroit Tiger. Smiling while he's hitting. Well, he has a two run homer already. Got him. And now he taps one slowly. Oh, he didn't get over. And so Rizzo has to race Johnson, who beats it out. Ah, uh, well, he's forgiven. So Montero, not used to the whole idea of covering first on a grounder to the oh, right side. Oh, stop he, it. He wants Joe Madden stop. to challenge the call. Come on, it's 13 Third, to 1. 13 to 1. Oh, please. Let's see. Did Rizzo get there? I don't think so. Oh, oh, he, oh he, he, he got it it's safe. It looks like he kicked the front of the base. Yeah, come on, we're not gonna let's go. It's Are third. they really challenging this? Come on. It's absurd. He never touched the base. Anyway. Oh. Yeah, that's part of your responsibility. Okay, you gotta go right on the school on on the chalkboard a hundred times. Ball hit to my left. I cover first base. They are not going to uh, challenge. Thank you. 
Turn the game into a farce. Come on. It was Davey Martinez, the bench coach, saying, yeah, we're not, we're not going to challenge. So now with two on and two on, Wilmer Flores will get a chance to become the second Met ever to get six hits in a game. And he'll get to face a position player to do it. As the play at first, you see Johnson's toe hit the front of the bag. Edgardo Alfonso is the only Met ever to get six hits in a game. And now Flores with a crack at it and getting to face Montero, who's not a pitcher. It was August 30th, 1999. Fonzie went six for six with a double and three home runs in the Astrodome. Flores today, five for five, two home runs, four runs batted in. Wouldn't it be ironic that a non pitcher would get Wilmer out today? Well, he went flailing at that sinker, and it's one and two. Lagares at second, Johnson at first with two out. One two coming and Flores lines one in the left uh, field and that's a base hit his sixth hit of the game. Wilmer Flores ties a Mets club record six for six. <laughs> and whose record did he tie his hero at Gardner Alfonso. Ah. Agardo got three home runs. Wilmer got two. Got a little sinker here ahead in the count right down the pipe. Wilmer's had some memorable moments in this ballpark the last couple of years hasn't he. Mm -hmm. And another one for him here today. The Mets 21st hit of the day and Wilmer with a half a dozen of them. Where's that raise his average to now? <laughs> Loney bats with the bases loaded. Wilmer, who started the day at 224, is now at 255. Good for Wilmer. 30 point rise. 31 to be exact. By the way, that was uh, 82 miles an hour for Montero. That's the fastest pitch he's thrown. The men are on base. He should have been out of this inning. Loney strokes one the other way for a base hit. That'll bring in Lagares. Everybody else moves up a base. Loney has his second end of the day, and that makes it 14 to 1. Well, this is feasting. Well, Montero looked like he had gotten himself through the inning when he got the ground ball from Kelly Johnson, but since he failed to cover first, he prolonged the inning, which got Wilmer in the record books, and it gets Loney another RBI. Well, everybody's had a long look at Montero, and they see that he's throwing the little sinker. So look for it. Tried just the one curveball that he hit uh, Rene Rivera with. So he scrapped that. And here's Matt Reynolds, who's one for five today. I wonder if he's getting gassed out there. He's throwing 29 pitches. Yeah. Already. Not something he's trained for. <laughs> Mets with 20. Oh, there's uh, Geico Sports Night tonight at 1030. Lots coming up. Make sure you tune in. That's pulled down to third. And Condelario takes it to the bank to end the inning. What an historic inning for Wilmer Flores. He picks up his sixth hit of the day to tie a club record. 14 to 1 New York going to the ninth.
four game sweep of the Cubs. Logan Verrett will try and get those final three outs. Wilson Contreras leads off in the ninth inning for Chicago. And hits one of the air deep to left. Back goes Nemo near the wall, and it's out of here. Mm. A home run for Wilson Contreras, his fourth major league home run. And it's now 14 to 2. First pitch thrown by Logan Verrett, and Contreras hits it out of the ballpark. Well, the Cubs scored the first run of the day against Syndergaard. Mets answered with 14 unanswered runs. And now Contreras gets the Cubs their second run of the day. First ball, fastball hit and wanted it away, got it up in inner half. So Verrett greeted rudely. Last time we saw Logan, he was starting in Washington on Wednesday night. And now Jamer Candelario, who picked up his first major league hit his last time up, gets his fourth at bat. He's one for three in his big league debut. And Verrett's been the, the Mets Swiss Army knife this year, used in every conceivable role. Mets have only used six starting pitchers this year, and he has been the sixth. The guy to fill in when necessary. Pitch Wednesday night because the Mets wanted to push Steven Matz back a day and they moved everybody else back a day in the rotation as well. And that has served them well in this series. They've pitched well, they've hit well, and they're about to finish off a sweep of the Cubs. Two and two now to Condelario with Javier Baez on deck. Mets aren't going to pick up any ground on the Nats today. They're up 11 to 1 in the eighth. Reds uh, finally got some hits after Strasburg left the game. So the Mets will stay five behind the Nats at the end of play today. Cubs, meanwhile, started this series with an 11 game lead in the Central. The uh, lead could be down to eight at the end of the day because the Cardinals were up early on the Brewers. Below the knees and a full count to Condelario. Syndergaard went seven, allowed a run on seven hits, no walks, eight strikeouts. Still hasn't walked a batter at City Field since May 1st. Huh. That's seven straight appearances, six starts without a walk at home. Antonio Bastardo pitched a scoreless eighth, and now Verrett just trying to finish it off. Mets are not the highest scoring team of the day. Toronto just finished off a 17 to 1 shellacking of Cleveland, the Indians' second straight loss after winning 14 in a row. Last night, the Angels scored 21 at Fenway Park. Saw that. In fact, in that game, CJ Crone went 6 for 6. So that's twice in two days that a major league hitter's gone 6 for 6. You know how rarely that happens? Rowan yesterday, Flores today. And Candelario strikes out with a 3 2 slider. And there's the first out of the ninth. SNY Super Slow Motion brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealers. Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing. There's Javier Baez, who's two for four today. Twice is single to right field. Mm -hmm. Ball and a strike to Baez with Matt Caesar waiting on deck. Mets had lost nine straight regular season games to the Cubs. Then beat them four in a row in the LCS in October and they're about to beat them four in a row. Now in this series. So after losing nine straight to the Cubs. This will be their eighth straight win against Chicago. And of course the four last October when it mattered the most. You got that right. 
That's hit hard and past the diving Flores off the jutting sidewall. And Baez will dig into second. His third hit of the day, a one out double. Just out of the reach. Oh, a bounce came up, bounced over the glove. So the Cubs have their 10th hit of the day. Now Matt Caesar up for the second time, grounded into a double play in the seventh. The thing that stands out the most to me is that, as was the case in October, the Mets have gone up against the Cubs' two best pitchers, Arietta and Lester, and beaten them, and beaten them badly, as they did in the LCS. I mean, never more so than Lester today. Well, Lester got clobbered today. Arietta lost a tough one. But he didn't finish. Topped foul. Well, Miguel Montero is on deck to bat for himself, which he can do, even though he's a pitcher. He's not really a pitcher. An ugly scorecard on the Mets side. It is pockmarked. <laughs> yes. O2 from Verrett and Caesar tops one toward third. Flores makes the long throw and Loney comes off the bag and Caesar is safe. That's the first blemish on Flores's record today. Six for six at the plate, but he'll be charged with an error there. Just a throwing error here. No, no excuse. Easy out. Here's Montero, who worked an inning and a third on the mound, gave up just the one run. Uh, now he'll bat for the first time. And he fouls one away. So the Mets have 22 hits today, which is one shy of a club record for a nine inning game. It's also only the second time the Mets have had this many hits in a home game. The only other time the Mets had 22 hits in a home game was September 20th of 1981 against the Cardinals. You were on the other side of that. I don't know if you remember. I don't. Probably better off that way. How did I do in that game? <laughs> <laughs> That's always the question, isn't it? One for four, okay. <laughs> but you were on the losing side right. of that. <laughs> <laughs> he scored two runs. Mm. Montero lifts one to left. And Nimmo battling the wind puts it away for the second out. So the Cubs are down to their final out of this four game series. Well they'll be glad to go home. They're at the end of an 11 game road trip that's going to finish off four and seven. While the Mets who staggered home after getting swept in Washington will be flying high going into their series with the Marlins starting tomorrow. Addison Russell is third at bat since he came off the bench in the sixth. He's gone one for two. And Russell fouls it away. <laughs> City probables for the series starting tomorrow night. Matt Harvey against Tom Kohler tomorrow afternoon. Steven Matz Tuesday night against Wei Yin Chen. And then Jacob DeGrom against Justin Nicolino. So the Mets face two lefties in that series, Chen and Nicolino. Seven o'clock Tuesday, one o'clock Wednesday. Second of the line. One strike to get for Verrett. And Russell pops 
it up. That'll go out of play foul. People have already headed home. So if you leave the game, do you keep the suspicious compression sleeve on your arm when you drive home? I don't know. Yeah, it's a good question. An etiquette thing. It's a free country. <laughs> Ground ball pass for Red. Off the bag. Johnson has no play, and everybody's safe. That is a squib infield hit for Addison Russell. And it keeps the game going. Now the bases are loaded. Oh, so Verrett missed it, and that cost him. So one more at bat for Jason Hayward. With the bases loaded and two out, Hayward is one for four today, two for 12 in this series. Participation. Go to coming, and Hayward slams it foul. Up in a good series for the Cubs with the biggest price tags, Hayward and Lester. It has not been a good series for everybody on that blue and red uniform. It's been all Mets. Four game sweep. That kicks away from Rivera, and that'll bring in a run. As Baez comes in to score to make it 14 to 3. On the wild pitch by Verrett. No, that'll be an unearned run. And that one got uh, Renee on the wrist, I think. One and two, the count to Hayward. With runners in second and third. Hmm. The fans feel like, let's go, let's put this game to rest. There's less rhythm to the rhythmic clapping now. And Hayward bounces one to short. Reynolds has got the big hop. Low throw, dug out by Loney, and that'll do it. The Mets pull off a, a pretty fair copy of what they did last October as they sweep four from the Chicago Cubs. Only their second ever regular season four game sweep of the Cubs. The last one came in 1985 today, an historic offensive day for Wilmer Flores. He went six for six with two home runs as the Mets bombard the Cubs. 14 to 3. Well, a lot of heroes here. All the starters got base hits, including the pitcher. Noah Syndergaard got a double, but Wilmer's the big story. Six for six, three runs, two home runs, three RBI. The Mets banged out five home runs. Granderson is 14th. Flores, of course, the two, four and five for him. Rivera, three. Johnson is third as a Met, fourth of the season. Only the second time the Mets have ever hit five home runs at City Field, and both times came in this series. As the Mets sweep four from the Cubs in impressive fashion, the game summary presented by Sleepies. For every Mets win, the Mets organization is proud to contribute $2,500 to Northwell Health and the Katz Institute for Women's Health. For more information, visit NorthwellHealth.com slash KIWH. This win brings the total contribution so far this season to $110,000. Mets have themselves a fun Sunday afternoon in completing the sweep of the Cubs. 
Wilmer Flores a huge day. 14 to 3 in the final. We'll be right back.